We can all sing. Uh, sing that was that was gosh. the intro. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. Uh, <laughs> cool. I'll I'll only charge five dollars for that. Easy, easy is five dollars. You can just take it off the profits. Done. Yes. <laughs> uh, right. Profits Cheapest are leader. zero. <laughs> yes. God, is that our? Is that the castle? What happened? That was the, that's the front. I don't know what gone. happened. Anything happened there? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't remember. A bunch of kids just started coming just... onto my property and killing themselves. <laughs> the wild party. Wild party. Wild that's, party. A, that's a lot of skinning. It's a lot of skinning. So can we? Do. Can we at least bury Jeff? <clears throat> no, no, no. He's getting skinned. No. That's no, <laughs> no. Imra, Imra is is stepping in. You nah, can skin nah, nah, everyone nah, nah. else but Jeff because Jeff needs a good. I only want to skin Jeff. <laughs> I only want to skin Jeff. Maybe we can clean up the battlefield with our new sponsor, Subway. <laughs> Subway, eat fresh. I mean, there, right. it was thousands and thousands of undead guys coming through that gate. So that is true. And whatever happened, because didn't like. Mechanical man explode. Yeah, um, a few times. I thought he ate all the bodies. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He kept sucking up all the bodies. See? Yeah. He, he was kept actually sucking good. The he was technically a vacuum. <clears throat> Sorry, God, we're ready. We'll stop bullshitting. Well, I mean, the the battle's over. You can see the the wreckage of the castle, <laughs> and the corpses, and the, the blood and death. I would like to find Jeff's body. All right. Um. So there are there are corpses littered everywhere. Like it, it is not like oh, there's Jeff. So you can make a roll because you know roughly where he died. Yes. What am I rolling for? So who's searching Race for Jeff? Final. We we we, we want to. Uh, I I was just saying I'm going to bury Jeff. Well, so Alex is searching I'll... for him, so you can roll oh, a d twenty. This who would be a survival. Who, 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 better, who has better searching skills between the two of us? <laughs> they searching is survival, I guess. Uh, okay. Surely it's an I'm investigation. Gonna roll, I'm going to roll that. I'm going to roll Surely it's an uh, investigation, Jack. All right. Yeah. Yeah, investigation probably, hey, because survival's um, more tracking. And they're not alive, so they didn't survive. God, my investigation's nowhere near as good. <laughs> all right. Yeah, Alex remembers exactly where he is. So as you go through the bodies, you see um, on top of like a little mound of zombies is uh, the corpse of a guard in guard armor. This massive puncture wound through the midsection. Uh, I'm going to take him to his hole and see him. <laughs> From the half hole. Did he spend a whole day trying... digging it? Gonna, gonna skin him and then bury him. All right, you drag him through the corpses. It is a tough journey. I'll get you to right roll at athletics because it is difficult. Yeah, it that is heavy. It looks difficult. Look at all the bodies. <clears throat> Rolling not very well, considering I get all these pluses to these things. It's taking a lot of time. It's taking a lot of time, but, but it, you end up doing it. But it takes you an awfully long time, and you're tired, so you'll have a point of exhaustion until you sleep. That's fair. I'm just for anyway. Right. The the holes are filled with zombies, you're dead dead corpses. It was a very useful hole, including the half hole. <laughs> the half hole. Hmm. What are you gonna do? I'm mostly worried that we won't have an army left. We're supposed to be. We're supposed to have recruited this army for the to take back the damn ponds, and they're all dead. All right, we just recruit children then. <laughs> no, this was just some of the army though, right? I hope so. This was just only the ones that just fought, if I remember correctly. Mm. I hope so. All right. So, if you want to bury him, Alex, you can roll religion. I guess you're the only person here, so... More religious than any boss. You have advantage with religion too. Eighteen. Okay, describe what, what you do. do. Oh, you know, just do the casual skinning him, full skin off, fold the skin, put it on top of his body, put him in the hole, bury him. 
So you get the shovel and, and, you, and you're putting like I dirt mean, over the hole? I don't know why I'm going to like I skin animals. I make, <laughs> I make a point of using the shovel that Jeff used to bury him. Alright, takes a very long time and you reminisce on the times you had together. Oh, why are we digging this hole, my lord? I'm really tired. Do I have to keep digging? Just this montage of memories that you had with Jeff yeah. during the time together. <laughs> and Aww. when the ceremony is finally finished and the last bit of dirt hits the grave and you pat it, you pat it shut, um, you see uh, a blue light start emanating from the ground and you see Jeff essentially his soul, his whole intact soul, slowly start rising, rising up into the clouds. As he passes you, you see little bits of green energy sort of trying to chip away at the body. But um, at the moment where it seems like it's going to chip away a bit of the soul, there's a golden encasing across his body. Yeah, I needed them, but it's okay. And it locks in that soul and it's not touchable. And his whole soul, un untouched, rises up into what you believe to be the coil. Excellent. A single tear rolls down his side of his cheek. I'll get you to make one more religion check. Alright. So, the blue soul is essentially the soul. The, the colour of the blue. That's, that's their soul. And you weren't familiar with what the green energy was, but it seemed like it was sort of chipping away at parts of the soul. Um, almost like it was like a parasite. And when you saw the, the gold energy sort of encase the, the soul that was going up, you felt like quite quite strong divine energy coming from it. And you, you sort of feel that uh, this was someone that had intervened and sort of protected this because it meant something to you. But the sort of green energy sort of sits in your mind and you're trying to think about what, what, what that was or what it could be. Not, no, not I know sure. what that was. Freaking goblin. <laughs> that freaking goblin. Cool. That all happens. Alright. What are you all doing? I'm gonna have a nap. What's my health? I'm gonna heal if I'm, if I'm not doing too good. I'm gonna find my health. Just a quick test. Yeah. Garrett, is that your microphone using that your microphone setting right now? I assume it is. Sounds a bit echoey. Is that better? Yeah, it's been like that all morning. <laughs> Has it? Oh, shit. Yeah. I have to. I have to. I have to eat and eat and sleep in order to heal or use my um, health pack. Is that correct? All right. What we'll do is we'll allow things to sort of unfold. Um, just as sort of like a description as to what happens rather than playing it out individually. So essentially what will happen is that uh, Chenny, the um, the old lady with the daggers, um, she will send some ravens out um, to tell the resistance what's happened as they were sort of scattered around. They weren't all in this fort. Oh, thank God. Um, she reassures you that this was a very minor outpost for them and only, what, 30 or 40 soldiers were here. So the army is still 260 strong. Um, but this sort of event sort of cements their foothold in this place because the Dragonborn is essentially able to control the information that comes in and out of this place quite effectively, um, able to gather resources. Um, after the checking of people, people's well-being in the castle and... Um, Balan gets gets his wound tended to. You can see this big scar across his throat from the claw marks. Jenny walks up to you lot and gestures at the machine. He says, "I don't know what we're going to do with that. That's that's very unusual." I've never seen anything like that until today. I bet you guys. No, this is new for me. I don't like metal, so, you know. 
Sure. I'm just I'm just poking it with my sword. I have no idea what the hell this thing is. Um, <clears throat> Jilla will come over to it, put a hand on it. Um, we'll channel some magic, and she will cast identify on it. What is it, Jillo? Tell us, Jillo. Ah, uh, well, um, you know those daggers that the cultists have? Yeah, the ones that... Didn't, yeah. you, didn't you guys get get it stuck to you? Yeah, that's, uh, like, soul metal, like that. When you picked it up, that was you, Biscuit, wasn't it? The hilt was, yeah. Yeah, Jen, yeah Jillo, what? Oh, soul steel, sorry. It's made well, it, of it? This whole thing is made out of it, and I don't touch it. it. It appears to destroy souls and turn it into uh, energy that this machine uses. No, you can hey, touch everyone, it. Don't touch it. Biscuit, go for it. No, you can touch. You can touch soul yeah. steel. Alex has it's a bunch uh, of soul steel on, on his backpack. <laughs> you think he's picking it, it up with, with with cloth though? It, so the hilt you can't pick up. The steel you can. You can. Oh. So, am I getting that it's made of souls, or it sucks souls? Well, it it, it, it it destroys them for energy. Wow. Uh, I. The, the sad thing is, is that this thing is indestructible. It, it can't be, can't be destroyed. We will have to find just, a place to bury it. Is that why it kept sucking up the zombies? I would say so. Zombies Some, someone's controlling it though because there's there's influence from the outside someone very far away is controlling this thing should we drop it to the bottom of a deep dark lake we really should because if you we say really should hide it we should hide it like Good bury enough. it somewhere where, where no one will find it i've well, got Silas a great idea exactly let's get Silas to <laughs> let's bury it like like just keep digging Silas. <laughs> He does like digging holes. Wall. You'll have to find a new Jeff to help. But let's just. No one can replace Jeff. Chenny Chenny interrupts and says, We will take care of it. I think that there will be use in researching it. Maybe we could learn how to harness its power or learn how to destroy it. Just if we are to face more of these things, we need to learn more about it. That's true. Once we learn more about it, we'll, we'll dispose of it. That's, that's a good um, idea. I would like you adventurers to go into town. I would like you to help as many people as you can. Uh, there may be still some lingering zombies around the town. Um, it's unclear. Um, and if you could take a look at the human fort and see what has happened to the humans, I will organize the rest. Okay. Okay. I hold... Um the glaive and go, do you want this back to Jello? Ah, yes, about that. You can keep that until today is done. After that, my connection to the shop will wither and the weapons will return to the dimension. Um, did, does anyone else have any other healing packs if we're going into town? or if, if, you, if you see my shop, can, can you tell me if it's intact? Don't worry, I'll look for the cage. Yeah, don't worry. Silas right. is very pro shop and very pro cape. He, will save it at <laughs> he any is pro shop and cape. <laughs> very pro <laughs> shop. Very pro cape. <laughs> I can check. Okay. What are you guys going to do? Um, well, I've got all my food with me. Um, I'm going to see if I can scout out for any arrows and see if I can put them back in my pack. What time is it? Because it was night when they came, right? Early morning. Oh, so we've had a, a rest? No. Oh, God. I, I kind of feel like we should have a short rest, if any sort of rest. I'm going to get arrows first, because I keep right. getting to pick them up. So where are you going to rest? You're just going to, like... I'm just going to rest on a pile of zombies. pile of zombies. <laughs> I want you to roll a d20 if you're going to try that. No, I'm not. Isn't there like a little cavern place where they had all the people hiding? Oh, 
Chani has asked you to go to town and, and find survivors. Maybe we could rest on the way. Like, is there a forest outside? I can sleep in a tree. There's a fairly dingy little path that leads back towards the entrance of town. And there's a forest. And then there's the town. We could, we could travel a little bit and then rest. Yeah, why don't we travel just to the outskirts of town and then rest? Get back some of our spells I'm not and then continue back <laughs> and and then continue into the 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 the, 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 the village. I'm so not Jenny tired. Will... Jenny is speaking to who wants to speak to you. So um if if there are survivors, we really should find them soon. Okay. Well we'll head to town. Most of the army is dead, and I don't see any scouts. Uh the scouts have said that there there's nothing other than just some mega zombies hanging around. Um, it should wait, be fairly wait. safe. Mega zombies. Mega. 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 Oh, Where's meager. How's your health, guard? That's uh, at nineteen. Out Same. of. Enough. Okay. Twenty-eight. Well. Close. Is it? I could heal you before I leave. That means. No, that's all right. I've I've got a a ration that I can eat on the way. Well, I'm, I'm rolling for arrows first, and then we can leave. You got three arrows. Three? God. The rest of them are broken. Oh, God. That's not many. <laughs> I'm going to have to get some more, or at least make some more soon. Great. Let's All be right. off, then. Let's head. Yeah, what's the plan? Let's head. We're heading to Let's good. Waddle. All right. So as you trudge through the bodies to leave the castle um every so often you see a formation of guards in the dirt uh, limbs ripped off necks sort of slashed blood everywhere you leave the fort exit out and you just see the carnage you see just zombies everywhere seem to be impaled by these huge spikes and you see the the battlefield where the trees and fought back the horde as well it is an unusual sight trees sitting in an unusual position like it's like it's like it was a soldier and it's you know it's died halfway through battle and there's just zombies climbed all over the tree and you see these big marks where these big chunks of its bark and wood has been ripped out as you pass by these dead gray trees walk down the path it is a cold day Colder than what you're used to. Autumn normally heads towards winter hmm. as it gets closer to the colder months. You go down and you see the town and you just see a lot of destroyed buildings. Um, you see a, a smoldering bit of smoke in the middle of town, but most of the buildings have just been ransacked. Right? You enter town. Yeah, I we'll check you have, doing. I think I even have a spell for that, or a um, I'd, I'd like to use my divine sense to detect evil, or a big cluster of evil. All right. So, the evil just determines whether there is a person with the alignment evil yet. Yeah? Yeah. I have, yeah, I, have kinda. Prime, I have prime evil awareness, which I can tell what kind of creature is there, aberration, celestials, it's... undead, within a uh, six mile radius. It tells me what I, um, it's like a, like, it's like, it's like a stench. Like, I, like, when I, if it's evil in a certain direction, it's like a stench, like, a smell, evil, or, or good. Or, or we could send you, um, we, this could, we could send your crow in to have a bit of a scout, might be less than a spell slot. True. Well, well, first. It's, it's not a spell slot. I need to go check on something and I run off towards the shop all right roll a uh a survival I guess to find where it is like your location to get your bearings okay you 20 16 the magic number hey 
All right. So as you sprint through town, you see marks on doors where there's been just claw marks dug into the wood. And you see like some bite marks on some of the sort of window frames. You see some smashed windows. You see some zombie corpses around town. The town is dead quiet. And uh, there's uh, frost on all the, the sort of ground that you've sort of run past. Um, and you see like a trail of, of frost going through the middle of town as well as it made its way up to the mountain. You run to near the middle of town through the stockades and in this little corner is this little little building nestled between two bigger buildings it's almost like someone built a house into an alleyway and what you see is you see some smashed windows you see that the building has been semi-collapsed in and i'll get you to make a roll <clears throat> This will be perception. Perception? So. 9 plus 3? 12? Uh, let me see. Alright. Yeah, that's what you see. Um, am I able to walk in to see if there's any survivors? difficult you sort of have to like push the door in and make your way into the house and there's like this big beam that's like across the entryway as the house has sort of been collapsed in uh all right when you get inside you'll need to make another check with your eyeballs uh yeah i'd like to be, look around to be perception uh no investigation 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 so that's plus three all right. As you're searching through the rubble, uh, the cheese shop, which is very unfortunate, as uh, the counter's been destroyed, and it's just missing cheese. There's no cheese in here. Aww. Um, so much food. Behind the counter, you see a little trapdoor that has some heavy objects on it, like some just wooden rubble. You see a trapdoor. It used to be under a little carpet rug, but that carpet rug's been like pushed aside. Oh. Um, I'd like to attempt to remove the rubble and look in there. Roll pure strength. <clears throat> That'll just be... Oh, wow. <laughs> wow! You really want it's that change. Like He's boy just really that change. so bad. Alright, so if, if you can imagine, right, a structural beam is resting on this trap door and it would be easy 120 kilos why don't you describe <laughs> what the scene would look like with your cat just she hulking this beam of 120 kilos off this trap door man i have no idea um with, with a passion of cheese in your eyes i guess as soon as, as soon as i breeze. kind of go to lift it it's like maybe like some other rubble accidentally falls on the other side of the beam, which slips and helps me push it out of the way. And it just kind of, the beam flings out the top of the roof. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yep. Wow. As you go to shift it. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That happens. Yep. Nice. The other beam that rests across it sort of like shifts its weight and pushes it on the other side. And essentially what you got is uh, the beam just goes wong. And it crashes into the building and it sort of hits the brick of the other building and goes crash. Um, you sort of like rubble sort of like starts coming down, but the beam the beam's off off the trapdoor. Wow. This is what I imagine Ben to look like as he's looking at the thing. Where is it? <laughs> is that bluey? God, you're a dickhead. <laughs> uh such a such a dad move there. Such a dad. Hulk out. Um, yeah, I'd like to now open the trap door to see if there's any one in there. All right. Um, I guess you to make a deck save. Deck save. Is that just a dexterity? Um, yeah, let me open up my character sheet so I can roll properly. 
I love my character sheet, it doesn't even inform me. Uh, I wouldn't have made any changes since uh, you level up as well. Yes, yeah, so this will be... Yeah, okay, so I won't do it. No, but you're not, none of your um. If you took a feat, none of your things would have changed. No. I did. I, so I did. Like twenty good. decks. Yeah. All right. So D twenty, and then I've got plus five to decks. So it's a nineteen. And back to the other guys. So you other idiots, you just see this cat he just... sprint. He's like, Pow! <laughs> off he goes down the middle of town. Jeez. And you see him running along the path of this little trail of frost on the ground. It's like little little crystallized ice on the ground. And he's sort of like running parallel to it. Well, Fast, faster than a normal human too. Double the speed. Should we, uh, should we follow the kitty cat? I was going to set up like a search and just have like someone on the lookout and go and bang on some damn doors and see if anyone survived. Like, I, I kind of feel like survivors. we need to attach a bell around Biscuit's neck. He, three, he's, three. Got a, he's, got, he's got another thing in mind. I was looking for survivors. He's got something else planned. Obviously. Three seconds later, you see a beam just fly out of the room of this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's maybe go, you need help. Let's go. Let's go find him. We, we shouldn't split up. So let's go follow the, follow the cheese crazy cat. We, All right. right. So you try and keep up with him, but you lose sight of him. You lose sight of him around the church. We won't care. Oh, Biscuits. Maybe he gone into the church. Yeah. Uh, uh, is is the church, the door still intact? What does the church look like? The church looks pristine. That hasn't been touched. Oh, nice. So I'm but, guessing then the church will only allow those with religious belief to enter in. Silas, are you comfortable with entering in and seeing what's in the church? More than welcome to try. Um, I'm gonna walk up and um, I actually don't. Have, I don't think. I think I do. I walk up and put um my last five points of <laughs> like hands in, lay on hands. So as as you put your hand onto the symbol <clears throat> that uh contains that holy energy, the second one, you find that it rejects your lay of hands, and in your mind you you feel. Like it's 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 essentially asking you open, but it rejects your lay of hands. Like it gives it back to oh, you. Oh, okay. Yeah, open. All right, you hear a click. I'm gonna poke, poke, poke my poke out, poke my head in, and see if there's anyone inside. All right. So when you open this and enter in, you see, laying across the opposite side of the room, a human, in robes. And you see a trail of blood leading from the door of the church up into him. And you see him, he's holding his, his sort of his gut. And his head's like resting down. And his eyes are very slowly blinking. Alright. I will slowly walk up to him, closing the door behind me. And I'll look at him and ask, Who are you and do you need help? Take a look at me. What do you think? I've I've been spending all night fighting these monsters. Who are you? You're not familiar. I am Silas of the Church of Sithrakis. And I believe it's your time to rejoin the coil. I'm just staring what? at him. Who are you? I am Inquisitor Jonas. Came to this town at the request of the captain. Apparently there's been some trickery afoot. Some magic user trying to steal keys. Didn't expect to have a massive army of undead come into town. Quick, do you have any healing? I need I need healing. I've been been gravely wounded. This fucker. Yeah. Silas is going to slowly walk up to the <clears throat> So how fair are the rest of the humans in the town? Ah, uh, they didn't survive. They were, we were attacked while we were using the zombies as target practice. I had uh, used a, a few fireballs on them, blew them to bits. 
One of the fireballs hit that damn magic shop and exploded. It was huge. Massive sound. I always hated that fucking shop. Such a prissy little shop I owner as well. With my wife. <laughs> All right, you you automatically crit, so you can roll damage. Oh, you destroyed the shop. You're like, yep, you're dead, dude. You were baiting that <laughs> yeah, so just... hard. <laughs> All right. I should have asked him if Let any me... of the robes survived. <laughs> robes come out of it. Did that roll yet? It's not. Oh, because I'm in I'm in D D Beyond. It's not gonna roll here. I was waiting for Blake to say something about like I hate snakes as well. It's the chariot. Oh. Oh, I, I was, was always gonna, gonna stab him, but as yeah. soon as he said the shop, oh. Oh, that wounded you deep. All those robes yeah. burnt. Terrible. Uh. Oh, uh. ow! <laughs> I don't know. It crit, if it crit, then I'll roll another. Doesn't is he? Is it a D10. He fails his save. Oh. So it's um. Sixteen plus nine. So you did twenty-five damage. Jesus. Yep. Is that with a crit? Yeah, that's with the crit. I rolled a, an extra D10. That's the two. I rolled really bad with that extra die. Yeah. You... Oh, I guess the I guess the the told the dead so would roll again, eh? Uh-huh. That's a d12. And another 7, so 32. 32. Jesus. Alright. <clears throat> How do you do this? Just stab it straight through his throat. As he's talking. Wow. As soon as you jam it into his neck, it sort of tings as it hits, as it hits the back of the church, and um, you sort of, like feel energy it's like a little bit of pressure on your head and it's like coming in and then you see his body just goes splat as this bell that sort of like appears inside of him goes ding and it just like explodes his guts everywhere and he kind of looks at you with shock and then like his body collapses i'll whip out my dagger and i start getting him Fucking All right, weirdo. just hit him roll uh roll Says religion the cheese man he's him right he's uh been in there a while that's why um, about him. You and me are the only fucking people left in the street. We've got Cheese Man running one way, bloody skinning fanatic going the other way. <laughs> maybe you and um, maybe you and I can look for survivors, should, eh? Well, should we try to see if Silas is okay by like per perching you up on my shoulders and you can look through the window? Well, it, right. you guys can hear it. There's this loud, there's mm -hmm. an audible ding. Um, and you remember this ding from battle, watching him eviscerate thousands of zombies. I'm just going to bang oh, on the door that. and see if he's alright. Alright. So, he's fighting something. Yeah. Before that happens. So, after, so actually, I guess the, the door knocking would happen before the skinning. So, as you're beginning the process, there's just this bang, 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 bang. Are you alright? Everything's fine. It's all fine. All good. Everything's fine. Sounds like he's okay. alright, God. Right, well, I, I know I'm... I... Hold on. Silas, um, when you finish this process, uh, essentially what you see is you see a very faint version of the soul start to go up, to, up towards the sort of roof of the building. And you see slowly there's this green energy that chips away at that blue soul and barely any of it makes it past the ceiling. curse and then I'll search the remaining of remains of his body. Alright. Go here. I imagine that ding sound is the same sound that we oh. heard at the start of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how to recreate that. <laughs> Just me trying to get my headphones to work. Oh okay. Alright, so on him you find let me see you find a talking doll and clothes of mending ooh talking doll okay 
Okay. Um, after that, I'll just uh, put the uh, remains of the body in a corner of the church, and I shall leave. Yeah, you, you open the door, and you guys see Silas come out, and there's there's some fresh blood on his uh, on his armor. God, can you just not get into a fight anywhere you go? <laughs> uh, just just some rats. Just just a rat in the church. A giant. Rat that That's bled that a much, lot of eh? blood for a rat. <laughs> I'm curious though, why I'm... is the church still like immaculate it is compared strange. to the rest of the town? I pick up a rock and I throw it at the window to see what happens. <laughs> Alright, roll and a I... d20. <laughs> I'm surrounded There's no by There's no way just... you would foresee this happening, Silas. <laughs> What's your plus? Yeah. Uh... Athletics plus one eight. You miss the window, but it hits the, <laughs> it just hits the side of the wall. <laughs> it hits it hits the brick of the church, and you hear like a fairly loud clang noise as the rock hits brick. You see, like the brick has been sort of chipped way through the rock. Well, you, you oh, damaged it. I also like to backhand him. Roll the hit. Stop! <laughs> stop fighting! <laughs> Yeah, I'll show the D20 in here. Uh, plus, it's probably going to be plus over 20, so... Right. Roll 1D4. Excellent. That's exactly Stop. what I wanted. Stop damaging people! Alright, he, he uh, backhands you with the armor on his, on, his, on his hand. And you take 3 damage. Emma throws her hands up in the air and decides to go and actually do some actual fucking work. <laughs> Exasperated <laughs> health, like, fuck these guys. Cheese man running and you trying to assassinate and skin people in churches and you trying to knock out the window, like, I'm going to go look for survivors. <laughs> I, I can't tell you why I ran off, but... I just... Oh, that's so funny. Honestly, I'm just avenging most... Yellow's shop, all right? Jeez. Though, to be fair, yes. Oh, my God. With how much you love that cape, I can actually understand. <laughs> all right. So I got hit, obviously. I'm a bit, like, annoyed. But I look at Silas and I look at him, right? I'm just like, all right. Shall we go and check out the outpost? And then we can check out Jello's shop and see what's left of it. Yeah. Well, we can go... By, I think the outpost was on the other side of town. We can actually pass by Jillo's shop. Is that right, God? No, it's uh, it's in between the church and Jillo's shop. Okay. All right. So we head that way. While we're right. walking that way, I just keep an eye out for Biscuit and continue to yell out for Biscuit. Biscuit! Biscuit! Roll Biscuit! perception. If you're trying to. Roll for yell. What's Why are you trying to find me? I said I'd be right back. <laughs> well, you have no idea where he's gone. We you don't know everywhere. where you've gone or what fights you've gotten into. <clears throat> can't see him. You can't fine. see him at all. I'm oh, more worried right. about the fact that, like, if we keep moving, then Biscuit won't be able to find us. Yes. Oh, uh, I don't know. Is I'm not letting say anything. Smell your, your stench from miles away. I'm sure I could suggest something, but I can't. All right. No, you can't. So this is the building that you see and surrounding it are the buildings near it, which are just completely rubble. Like they've been just overrun or like had a stampede of, of elephants trample the buildings and destroy them. Um, you see uh, there's this building, like this house. It's a fairly big house and it's mostly intact. It just looks like a golem has walked through it. Because there's sides of the building that's just intact, and then in the middle, it's just destruction. Oh. And we go back to the cat. So, Ben, you've just picked up this trap, and out of nowhere, screams Frank with a spear. <laughs> ah! Frank, Frank! And he's going to try and hit you. All right, plus three. 16. I'm 16 out of the class. <laughs> he hits me. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, 
Wait, it hits you, hits you for four damage. It hits you in the leg. Yeah. Oh. Ah, 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 Frank, ah, stop, ah, stop. It's me. Ah, 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 you okay? I've been, I've been in that hole for 12 hours. Oh, my fucking leg. <laughs> I'm sorry. He tries to pull the spear out. <laughs> Help. I'm sorry. He goes, he pats it. He's just like touching it. It's like, so, it's like a small, so wound. he's just like touching it like this. Ah, stop. <laughs> don't, don't, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. Oh, 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 oh. Like, oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He runs back into the pit. And then. Oh, <laughs> shit. Comes out with a, I think it's a superior potion of healing. And he hands it to you. He's like, drink, drink. <laughs> uh, thanks. I drink it straight away. You'll have to look up how much healing that does, but that's that's like full healing. Right? 44 Yay. plus 4. Because that's the one above the normal oh, yeah. one. Nice. Oh, so I'm what would it be health? max? Could you take one health? 4d4 is 16 plus 4 is 20. Yeah? Yep. You heal for, you heal for 20 health. Wow. Jeez. Yeah, max nice. now. Now you smell the most pungent of smells coming from this trapdoor. It smells like cheese has been shoved right up your nose. <laughs> they, they, they came for Frank. They came for cheese. I hid. They, they destroyed my shop. I was ready. <laughs> Don't know why I came here. <laughs> Frank, we gotta get you out of here, man. This isn't where you should you shouldn't be in there. That place that bloody pit stinks, man. Jeez. That's my house. I live there. Oh. <laughs> I live with the cheese. Maybe light some incense or some shit. I don't know. It stinks, man. It's danky. Uh, fire is bad. I don't like the light. Burns my eyes. Look, we gotta get you out of here, man. This isn't a place to stay. Is there anyone else with you here or just the cheese? <laughs> Do you, want to, do you want to come with us? We can help, we can protect you. We're, we're gathering as many survivors as we can. Oh, that's so funny. Roll persuasion, because he's undecided. Okay. <laughs> 18. What about the cheese? <laughs> Bring the cheese with you. Do you have something to pack it up with? No. It, could you make more cheese? Yes. Maybe we make more cheese. Okay. One sec. And it goes down to the pit, and you hear some rustling noises. It's like a, like a, like some, some, like he's hitting something. He's down there for a good three minutes. When he comes out, his entire spear is skewered cheese. I am ready to go. Where are we going? All right. Uh, yeah, follow me. We're, we're finding survivors. Oh, uh, so <laughs> Is there anywhere warm? Yeah, there will be. Once we gather some people together and we head back to the castle, we can get warm. So the castle is warm? Yeah, castle should be pretty warm, I think. In light of fire. Okay. I'll be there. All right. Hey, Did you want to... Oh, okay, cool. No worries. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll be there soon. <laughs> and you see this kobold with this short spear. It's about half the size of a normal spear, but it's filled with skewered cheese. And this thing stinks. He's, he's a moving stink bomb. And as soon as he walks outside, he's like, ah, ah, Oh, so bright! Ah! And he's sort of squinting as he as he walks through town. <laughs> Makes the whole day. That is the best thing I've ever pinched in my brain. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. All right. And I just kind of, yeah, I, I guess I direct him towards the place we came from, or I'm like, you can follow us. Oh, you so you see something glint in the bottom of the the, the trap uh, darkness because you can kind of you have dark vision. Hey, I think I do. I'm a cat, right? 
How uh, do I you find... see something? You see something fairly shiny in the uh, in the trapdoor. Like, I do. Uh, have not vision. in the trapdoor. Down down in the the little pit. Um. All right. As I look down and see it, I lean in closer to take a look. All right. Do you go down into the pit? I. I go down it. All right. Shiny, shiny. We're going to sort of make a constitution save. <laughs> so with a constitution save here, yeah, would that be a d20 plus the constitution plus? Yeah. Fifteen. Wow, lucky. So you stifle some gags as you enter the pit, and it smells like sweat, it smells like mold, and it smells like cheese. And the, surprisingly, all three scents seem to fight for supremacy, but none of them seem to mask each other. It's like a carousel of different smells. It's like BO, and then it's cheese, and then it's mold. There's the BO again. I wish to, I wish to um, create a pleasant smell in front of my face as to why I'm down there with my prestigitation. All right, that smell disappears, and suddenly you started smelling, essentially watermelon. You start smelling watermelon. Awesome. I look for the gleaming thing I was down here to look for. So his little hut, you see, there's like a row of spears. Looks like he's just handcrafted them. Um, some of them, are, you can tell, are made from like a leg of a chair. One's from like a leg of a table. One's like an like it looks like an old pool cue that he's just sharpened the end of. It's just a mismatch of different spears. And it's all in a row. Okay. And you see um, little sections there where it looks like he worked on something, either cutting the cheese. It's just like cut into the earth. Looks like he's made himself like a little bench, but it's just all dirt and it's not even like smoothed out. There's like bits of crummy dirt all over it. And you see like this little knife. You see where he sleeps, which is like just dug into the into the, the, the dirt. It looks like this little circular pit and that looks like where he sleeps. Yeah. And you see a small little box and it's got a little lock on it. And it, it's the only thing that's remarkable about this room because it looks like a fairly intact, fairly normal chest. I would like to just poke my head back out of the pit. Empty. I come back down again. I sneak over okay. to the box. I get up. All right, it's fairly small. You can pick it up. So you just pick up the box. I just look at it for a little And I put it down. And put the box down. I attempt... Is it heavy? No. Gleaming a little bit. I attempt to lockpick it. Absolutely. Well, a D20 sleight of hand. Um, so with your lock pickers nine. kit, you can, yep. with your lock pickers kit, one of three, you only have two charges left. Okay. Yeah, I use one. All right, so you're going again. First um, lock pick, snap. Okay, it was a nine. Okay. Uh, yeah, I try one more time. Yeah. The roll. Uh, that's 21. Wait, no, 7, 12. Yeah, 19. Click. The lock falls off. I lift the lid open with two hands. Alright. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll get you to roll a d8. Roll 1d7. 
Seven. Wow. Nice. Maybe okay, seven's good. So you see this little pouch and it looks like it's got some dust in it. And the dust is sort of gleaming and glowing as you look at it. It's got this little pouch. I sniff it a little bit. No weird? Uh Roll a d20, constitution. Alright, so as okay. you as you breathe in the dust, it is like like pepper in the nose, and it is like, it kind of like blinds you and like dulls your senses for a second. Oh, but you kind of get to shake it off, and you, you, you stifle what, what seems to be like a bit of a coughing fit that was coming on. Alright. Um, I put it in my satchel for later. Away. I gotta fucking write some notes then, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you wouldn't expect this. Someone sounds so happy. <laughs> I muted him. Oh, yeah, play the guitar. Strum, strum. <laughs> Alrighty, very good. Um, what are you gonna do now, Ben? Um, I then use, um. My ability to ask my crow who's flying like above where my party is. Right. Ah, they're over near the human outpost. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. And then I kind of um I pounce out and jump out front of the shop and just like dust my clothes off, start walking over. Very good. Alright. I would say that you can all arrive at the same time. Uh, and yeah, you see this outpost, you see so many corpses of zombies sort of littering around the fence, and it looks like they were climbing up above it. You see, like, a lot of the zombies that are sort of impaled on the little, um, the fence, they've got their heads, like, chopped off cleanly, and around you, you see these massive potholes that are smoldering, um, and you just see, like, thousands of zombies. There are so many zombies in this area that have just been murdered. I look for the entrance to go in and uh, look at the actual inside of the place. So, roll a d20 and it's strength to try and push open the door because it's a push door. Oh. I assume that you're pushing the door open rather. Yeah. Oh, it's kind of like moving a little bit, but it's it's there's something really heavy behind this thing. Oh, don't worry, it's guys. Doing, Apparently, I'm really strong now. And I just put one <laughs> hand on it and I start to push. <laughs> Roll a d20. I will laugh if it's a 20. Oh, that's funny. No budge. No budge. It feels like it's a, it's going to be a bit of a group effort. I... Maybe if we all push on it and not just <laughs> one-handed. And let's, like... Who's yeah, pushing? Um, Silas will push. Silas has got the strength. So we got so. Silas? Me. 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 Alright, three three D20s. I didn't hear Ben if he was doing Oh, that. yeah, I said me. Sorry. Alright, roll. Everyone roll um, strength. Roll strength? Mm -hmm. Oh, God. I rolled terribly. <laughs> 15, 13, 6, and... Holy shit! 21. Oh, Go the skinny elf. <laughs> that's uh, thirty-four. That's forty. All right. Yeah. So just you three are able to push through it. And as soon as you get like a little bit open, you just see like this place is filled with corpses. As you push the door open, enough sort of like force gets it to pry it open, 
and then just this mound of bodies of zombies just start like pouring out of it like a pool and it's just like this water like all these corpses just like fall out of it and it locks the door open sort of like because of the, this, this pile of bodies oh god We're gonna is there enough the room to like walk into the room you can climb on the pile oh I attempt I... to climb my way in so Garrett's going in? Anyone else? I suppose so. That's gross. Oh, Alright. Imra's going in. I'm going to uh, crawl in after. Should we leave someone looking. outside or we're all going together? We should all go together. Alright. Silas will... Snakey well. boy can get in there, alright? That's three. Anyone else going in? I will follow Silas. This is quite wise. Like a good idea. Right. So as you prop yourselves up on the mound of zombies, um, we've all been just absolutely eviscerated. Um, you sort of see that there's these two pockets um, where it's almost like there was um, there was someone like standing here, and there's just this gap, and there's they're like they're just surrounded in corpses. And there's like one or two bodies around their feet. And you see two of the humans um, in the middle of these little pockets. Um, looks like they had caused the buildup of bodies all around them. That is just like piled up around them. And it like it looks like a little well. And at the bottom of it is um, a human in each side. So there's two. Two little Ooh. holes. Are they dead? It's humans. Yeah, they're, they're, they're super murdered. You can see... That they their skin has changed color and they're like lifeless, and you see one has this massive chunk of his shoulder just ripped out, oh. um, and you see one has like all these sort of like marks around his neck, like he's been choked. Wow. I want to investigate and see great. what, and see what sort of loot they have on their body. You're gonna climb into the well, are you? Climb in the well. I'm gonna get the bathroom well. super quick. Shit roll. They both have <clears throat> that magical breastplate that suits to their skin. And they both have, uh, I'll say long swords. They both have long swords. Can I um get to the stairs of the fort just from the picture? Yep, yep, you can quite easily. Um, yep, just corpses everywhere. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to. Yeah. I like to head to the stairs and try and make my way to the door. Okay, great. Is there? I also follow after I've looked through the bodies. Is there any other human bodies around, or just these two? Just these two at the moment. Okay. And all right, I'm I'm right. I'm looking for bloody arrows because I've got like nine, so I'm in a lot of shit if we go into battle. <laughs> As you make your way up the stairs, you see that the doors have been like shoved in and there's just claw marks all over the door frame and the door is on the other side of the room sort of cut in half. Um, and you see these these long sort of, um, it's kind of like, imagine like a hose, right? These hose shaped uh, indents into the wall um, where the door is. So if you imagine the door frame. Uh, yep. Like there's um like it's like it's been cut out like these two like, um like, essentially like a really thick rope has been like put against it, and dug it sort of engraved its hole into it. You see two of it. Um and inside you see, two of the hunting dogs, um surrounded by a number of, of uh, dead zombies. You see um the the hunter there that's laying there. Looks like he's, he's sort of been half eaten. And there's just corpses everywhere. And you see a fairly ornate plate armor on one of the, the captains. You can tell it's a captain because he's, he's got three stripes. So two and then one. And he's got a big greatsword. And uh, it's uh, you see all these markings on the walls. And it's just chipped, chipped brick everywhere. And uh, you see a desk. And you see some cabinets and some files, and you see a fairly large chest. 
I walk in, I walk over to the captain. I'm gonna examine the great sword. Um, what is, does it look any different from a normal great sword? Uh, it's it's kind of smoldering a little bit. Nah, I'll pick that up, strap it to my back. I'll, I'll look at the uh the plate armor. You're that gonna on. go grab it, are you? You're gonna go grab it. Yeah, I'm grabbing. <laughs> All right, how do you grab it? I'm gonna grab it like a normal person would grab it, like I'm, I'm <laughs> like a normal person. By the handles. By the handles. Roll a d20. Oh, excellent. Well, oh. oh, sorry, but just normal d20. Ooh. not really good today at all. Nine. It's very, it's very hot. It is uh, like, it's like fresh brand new coffee hot as you pick it up Ooh. hot uh silas instantly drops it oh, oh silas okay what happened Stand up my head. ah it's perfectly fine you should try grabbing it yourself yeah no is sure. there any magic on it biscuit i'll give it a try you grab it to you, ben? i'd like to cool it down and then grab it all right how do you cool it down with prestidigitation. All right. So you're able to alter the temperature with prestidigitation. Let me reconfirm. You it can. Like melon. I can chill, warm, or flavor one cubic foot Ooh. of non-living material one hour. Nice. And I'd like to do it to Silas's hands as well. Because I smelt like burnting. Yeah, no. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just like a, like a cooling feeling on your hands where it was burnt, and uh, you have cold hand. <laughs> cold um, no, 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 no ch blade. chilly hands. Chilly, you have chilly hands. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> the blade steams as you do this effect, and it just continues to steam. And it's, it's starting to get foggy in the room. Wow. What is going on? Uh, All right. It's, it's it's more foggy now. <clears throat> Maybe like a quarter foggy. <laughs> I'm going to crack a window. <laughs> is there a window? Oh, man. All right. It's, it's, it's half filled with fog. I stop. I stop the spell. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, it's really it's hot. So it's really warm in this room because all the humidity and like the, the smoke. Jesus Christ. Get a little sauna. Smells beautiful now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, soggy cool. smell with zombies. Delicious. Um. While they're like trying to find a window, can I like look into the chest and see if there's anything in the chest? Are you going to try and open it, are you? Yes. Alright, roll a d20. Alright. Um, <clears throat> when you go to open it, you notice that it is under the effects of a magical spell that keeps it locked. You can tell this because there is nothing physical keeping you from opening it. Um, spoopy. Oh, obviously something important's in there, and no one wants us yeah, to like, go in there. <laughs> yeah, not without well, we can't physically magic lock, ability. We can't physically lockpick it. Uh, I'll get you to roll an arcana, Karen. I don't because think there's a lock on it. Like just said, there's nothing physically showing us that it's like locked to us. It's only closed and can't be opened magical. So even if we wanted to lock pick it from range or whatever, it doesn't look like it has a lock on it. Roll your arcana, G. Alright, 
it's not impossible to to open you know this you know that it's it's a familiar spell you just forget the name of it it's not impossible to to lock pick it's just very hard are there any like pieces of clothing or cloth that i could muster together uh yeah there's um i mean the the hunter guy's wearing like leather and and thick padded cloth I'm going to use that to wrap the sword. Yep. You wrap it up. You pick it up. It's like a hot water bottle wrapped in, in a covering. Excellent. I was a bit cold. It is good. Gonna... Yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. Really here. Uh, I would like to touch very carefully the, the, the chest plate. You, you said you had armor as well. Does that burn me? Or will I... Like... No. It's, it's cool to the touch. It's very ornate. It's very thick. I would like to disrobe the captain and take the armor and put it in a sack or something. Like, so whenever you, try and, whenever you try and like shift the breastplate off of his body, it molds to his form and stays on. Interesting. What if I completely... Cut off all his limbs. Ew. <laughs> roll, roll three d twenties. Shing shing shing. Remove his, remove his entire mass. Ew. What a mess. I'm starting to think that Silas is just like a mass murderer. Yeah, I'm starting to think that maybe he accidentally skinned someone that he found. <laughs> All right, so you hit once for sure. Yeah, you, you remove one arm off, and you notice that the um the armor sort of forms over the the nub, Ew. and protects it. Interesting. I don't think that armor That's is very good enough, Silas, and you're making a mess. <laughs> I could have a. This can be a little display piece if I remove all the limbs. I can put it in my house. The corpse of a human, like a turtle shell. Yeah, just covered in this breastplate. It's very ornate. I don't, I don't really wear it. I was thinking of trying to sell it. Yeah, I know you is, there anything, um, is there anything else in the room besides this guy? There's, there's, there's files, there's cabinets, there's the table which has little drawers. Oh no, that's any good to me. Is there any stairs to go upward? So yeah. Where's all the archers in this place? I need some freaking arrows. Does this guy have any coin on him? You can search him. Um, you will find a um, hundred gold coins. You'll also Excellent. find. You'll also find uh, a key. Ooh. Ooh! I'm gonna toss the key to Garrett. I mean, guard. <laughs> and I will start making four small piles of coin on one of the tables. And I see if the key unlocks the chest. Click. Ah. <laughs> Good inside. job. Good job, Silas. The dad of the group right. coming through again. Common sense. Alright. Uh, roll 1d12. Just G. Just G. Four. All right. No problem. All right. So, Gary, you're familiar with these kind of boxes. Um, this is a similar to a box of choosing. Um, it, it it holds multiple items, but it's 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 you feel like this is done to evenly distribute people's items, their personal effects, so that people can't just like pick up everything. It's just like you're allowed to put one thing in, you're allowed to pull that one thing out, and that one's yours. You can't like rifle through and steal everyone's stuff. So, you know that that is the box that it is. It lets you pull one item out each. Oh. Nice. I rush up next to guard. What's this? This looks what nice. What I have in the wow. box. So, you try and pull an item out. All right, roll a 1d4. Get the heavy one. Get a heavy one. 
things do things have a certain feel? Do they feel shiny? My eyes are dilating. Roll 1d6, Garrett. Great. Oh my god, Garrett gets this item. Alright. So you pull out a wand, Garrett. <laughs> awesome. You're a magic man. Yep. I wonder what this does. I wave it around. No! Alright, so you do this and you point it at someone? No, I point it at the wall, but I wave it. Alright, some magic shoots out at the wall and sort of... <laughs> Seems harmless. But there's clearly magic. Ooh, magical. I'll uh, look at this a little bit later. Yeah, put that away. <laughs> that can be dangerous. I'm learning them right now. My turn? That happens. I rug, rub up next to G. I go, my turn? Yeah, see what you can pull out of here. I chuck in my hand. Alright, roll 1d3. All right, roll 1d2. Like your life depends on it. Ooh. One. Jesus. Oh. All right, you pull, out, you pull out this hooked spear. Hooked a spear. Okay. What does it look like? Um, it kind of looks like a like a, a fishing spear, but um, it kind of glows with a shimmer of blue, and it's clearly meant for for combat. So it's quite military-esque, um, but it's like a spear, and it's got like this little hook that comes out. Ah, uh, yes, yes. That looks cool. Not exactly your fighting style, but maybe you might be able to sell it. Maybe. Or I can trade it with one of you guys. I walk away from the chest and say, you, you, you go, you go. Your turn. You or me, Silas? I'm still, I'm still counting money. Okay. I'm very slow. Uh, I I, I'm look very slow. My, I put my hand in. <laughs> All one d three. Roll a one d two like your life depends on it. You get a hooked spear. <laughs> I've always wanted a hooked spear. Alright, you pull out a diamond. Seems to be a diamond. Hey, that's worth a lot. I just go and I pop it in my knapsack. Silas. Silas. Silas you... walks away from the table. There's three piles of 25 gold coins. And I, I walk over to the chest, put my hand in. What is Roll this? It looks 1D3. empty. Roll a 1d3 if you want to pull something out. One. <laughs> Alright. Roll 1d3. Oh, again? Yes! Maybe. Sounds like low was the best. We rolled high and it was bad. Well, not uh, bad, but... Like, uh, well, life, one life seemed time. to be bad by the sounds of it. Alright. So, Magic. you pull out a sphere of glass. Just clear glass, right? Yep. Sphere of glass. Is it magical? Gonna Do you sense anything to... on it, magic people? I don't know. It, it, it shimmers with a, a blue essence around it. Alright, I'm just going to put it in my bag. Blue sphere of glass. Oh yeah, I better put diamond in my bag. Hey Silas, would you like to make a trade? 
trade? What do you want to yeah. trade? I pull out the doll. You want this creepy doll? <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded so nervous. <laughs> Where'd you get that doll? It's ugly. What the hell is that? It's creepy. Yeah. Does it, does it look like Annabelle? Uh, it looks like um. Oh, Annabelle. Well, one of those, no, no, one no, of those no, old no. dolls, you know, with the 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 cotton hair. It's like, like a red doll with like the pigtails. Oh no 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 no! That looks creepy. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely don't want this. Uh, no 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 no! What I was thinking doll? maybe this big long spear thingy. You'd want to trade for that little circle shiny thingy. It's a spear, yeah. The short spear. Ah, too yeah. short for me. I like them long. No worries. But, you can have this doll if you want. No. I don't even know whether you should have that doll. That kind of scares me a little bit. Oh, she looks... Better. She looks... She looks sweet. Doesn't look like she'll murder you during the night. That's a whole dad. Um, where did um, you where did you find that? Uh, just something I picked up along the way. I guess yeah. I Pop. throw the spear it held back somewhere. I put the doll back in the bag. I'm gonna add What? That happens. Okay. You can all add twenty five gold since we've shared it. Yeah. Oh yeah. thank you, Silas. Thanks, Silas. Alright. Alright. Let's keep going. Now it's the main attraction, guys. Jello right. store. What is this? Yes. Um what did what did Chenny want us to find? Just suss things out. We're not looking for anything particular, right? Looking for survivors, looking I think. People. Alright, let's keep going. There's no one alive in here. Did you find anyone while you were on your little random escapade, Biscuit? Where did oh. you go, Biscuit? Yeah, I went to go see an old friend and see if his shop was okay. Turns out his shop was pretty crap and apparently I've got super human strength, but um, <laughs> I mean, I found him. He's okay. He's a bit disorientated. Um, he stabbed me in the leg, healed me to full, and I told him where to be safe. So... Be stinking out the joint up there soon enough. Oh well. Stinking. Okay. Yeah, the little cheese vendor. Oh. That I met okay. a while ago. I can't there believe was a he's cheese alive. vendor? Yeah, I told you guys about the little cobalt cheese. Oh. Yes. He's yeah. a, he's alive. Yeah. He, uh, oh, well. Slept in a danky little pit, but he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's one. So let's head to Jillo's shop and see what we can find. So we can right. find anyone else. So it's a sad time. Yes, Garrett? I was just going to say, do we want to continue looking in, like, the chests and the wardrobe stuff? Or do we just want to okay. leave? You can if you like. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at, see if there's anything else we're taking in this room. I like to look at the desk. Alright, it's, it's a very, very ornate, like, uh, wooden desk it's like one of those really expensive executive desks it's like really big and the wood coloring in it is like this dark brown it looks beautiful and it's got uh, like three little com compartments i rolled a 15 investigation so this looks like the office um looks like there's a bunch of files there's a desk with some um drawers in it um looks like there's a rack full of just clothes for humans um, you see the, uh, the hound master, um, dead, and he's got his animals. Looks like they fought to the death as well. Wow. If I put something back in that chest, can I take something else out? You can be the guinea pig then. Give it a try. I chuck that spear back in. Right. It disappears into the void. Then I close the chest. Click. Then I reopen the chest. 
It doesn't open. With the key. Now it opens. <laughs> <laughs> and I put my hand back in there to find something. Roll a 1d2, like your life depends on it. Oh, it's the same seed. <laughs> I guess I should have just kept what I had. Dude. Fuck. Alright. Roll a strength check. Oh, <laughs> there's something grabbing what me. What the hell? <laughs> so it was gonna pull you in? 13. No plus. Oh, okay. So you, you, you're you not losing it, but this thing is fucking heavy. It is not budging. It feels like it's falling back in, and you sort of see it. It looks like the top of, like, some metal armor. It kind of looks a little bit blue. Ah, grab me, guys! Help me out! <laughs> I grab, grab it and off and start pulling. Right, you pull him out, and this th thick blue armor comes out and falls on top of him. And it is like, uh, like plate armor, but it is blue. Wow! What the hell oh. did you pull out? Help me. It is heavy as fuck. Get it off! Get it off me, please! Silas so might trade you the bloody ball now. I mean, I trade him, but I can't breathe properly. <laughs> I pull it off. Um, we try, we'll all start we, we all, can we all pull it off? Yep. yep, yep, you pull it off him, it sort of slides off him as it's very heavy. Uh, only you, Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to let go of that thing. Um, it looks much better oh, than your spear. Alright, All right. yep. About... It's, plate, it's plate armor and it's blue. Wow, that's uh, that's quite pretty. Very pretty. Is it too heavy for you to Very wear, pretty. Silas? You're our, you're our no. plate wearer. Oh, Silas, your mouth waters looking at it. Oh, I definitely want this. I take out the doll. <laughs> <laughs> I jump up right. on top of the plate armor and sit on it and look at Silas. He's not going <laughs> to want your doll, Silas. I pull out, I pull out the... Uh, the shinies. Des describe what the cloak of mending looks like. Uh, so... Alright, when my page loads. That's right. So That's this me. elegant outfit of traveler's clothes, um, it's just an elegant traveler's clothes. Um, it can be uh, like brown and green. I'm going to pull out the cloak of Mendy. I'm gonna sneakily put the doll in there and then pull out the blue orb. And then go, you can have these. All three? All three. I don't need your cloak. Oh. I got a beautiful cloak. And I kind of like it's throw clothes. in my clothes. Ah. And it's elegant clothes. Like it's formal, yeah, fancy. Really fancy clothing. You should, uh, uh, maybe you should put it in the box and see what else you can pull out. This is fun. Let's just grab everything and throw it in the box and pull things out. Let's put a zombie in the box. <laughs> I'm gonna. Gosh, gosh. Look, that looks that looks like more than I can carry, and that that those clothes look like they're well more classy than I would ever think to wear. Oh, look! I'll give you this armor. I kind of bang on it. I just want that little shiny, little circly deliciousness you got there in your hands, and my. Stylate looking at the little Silas, oh. that's a fair trade. Look how good this armor looks. I was giving him all three, so you're like, what's what? <laughs> Alright. Here's a, a tabaxi. I, I, I hand him the shiny ball. I receive it with two hands. And I jump off the armor. Alright, can all I right. pick it up? You can, yep. Yeah. Excellent. It I'm is it is my plate armor and it is blue. Ah, ah blue plate armor, excellent. Oh. I will spend the twenty minutes it takes to put it on. Done. Yeah, it's it's plate armor. So that's AC eighteen. Wow, yep. nice. And what were you you had like a chain mail before? 
I had a breastplate on. So I was like 15. Nice. Can you even kind of wear it? Because it looked pretty heavy. He's pretty strong. He's a strong pretty snake strong. man. Strong snake man. Cool. There's a part of you all that wonders wonder what these do. If only they came with instructions. I don't have any spell slots left. I cast. As soon as I receive that damn little orb, I cast. Identify on it. <laughs> All right. So, you see the cat go into this like little meditating meditation as he's holding the globe out, and Ben, um, you oh, know this sorry. item. One sec. It's it. Damn cables. So Ben, you know this item to be a drift globe. So this small sphere of thick glass weighs one pound. If you are within 60 feet of it, you can speak its command word and cause it to emanate the light or daylight spell. Once used, the daylight effect can't be used again until next dawn. You can speak another command word as an action to make the illuminated globe rise into the air and float no more than five feet off the ground. The globe, globe hovers in this way until you or another creature grasps it. If you move more than 60 feet away from the hovering globe, it follows you until it is within 60 feet of you. It takes the shortest route to do so. If prevented from moving, the globe sinks gently to the ground, becomes inactive, and its light winks out. What a cool, cool Hey, uh, Biscuit, are you able to identify this wand as well? Uh, I mean, I can. I don't have too many morts. I mean, we're probably going to go to sleep soon, so I'm happy to have a look at it. And then I, yeah, I, I accept the wand with two hands. Thank All right, so you're going to identify that one too, are you? Um... Yes, I, don't, I identify the wand as well. It's crazy. Uh, it's not your item, so I'm just going to post it here rather than in your chat. Yep. And then you can describe it to Garrett. I can't believe Garrett got that item, of all people. Who would you expect well, to get it? it it'd, be, it'd be useless to me. I might as well go to someone who can use magic. Anyone can use the wand. Really? Yeah. You don't have to be skilled. Oh, you are, to are you not a ranger? I thought you had magic yeah, as a ranger. My magic's not really arcana. Mine's more like, I suppose, nature. I suppose so. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I mean, okay. I hand it back to I... God. <laughs> Tell us, Biscuit. Okay. Um, it's called it's it's wand of scales. Scales. <laughs> scales. Oh, it's a wand of scales. Like Essentially... scowling, like. Yeah. Yeah. It that is. is so funny. So the wand you can use it three times a day. It has like three charges. While you're holding it, you can use uh like one of your actions to expend one of its charges. And to target a humanoid, you can see roughly within, like, yeah, 30 foot of you. Um, the target's got to succeed a DC 10 charisma saving throw. It will be forced to scowl for one minute. <laughs> the wand regains all expended charges daily at dawn. If you expend the wand's last charge, you roll a D20. On a one, the wand will transform into a wand of smiles. <laughs> So the literally the worst person to be in charge of something like that. Choose, you can choose to change someone's mood at will. So... All right. Remind Thank you for to, that. Remind, remind me not to piss you off, guard. I, yeah, I no, grabbed the one welcome. back. I pointed at Salas, and I use the wand of scowls. You see no change. He's already scowling. He's already scowling. <laughs> Scales, Roll like, a constitution scales, there, scales, Alex. Squared. Scales, scales squared. <laughs> That's so stupid. So I have uh, resistance to magical effects. 
So do I have advantage? Yeah, that's advantage, yeah. DC 10. Sorry, Constitution? Yeah, Charisma. Yeah. Oh, oh, Charisma. Yeah. Oh, Charisma? Yeah. You shake that, that scowl off as it starts to form. You're like, no! And that uh, scowl anyways. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That happens. Did you just try and cast a spell on me? No. Hmm. I wouldn't do something as irresponsible Stop. as that. Oh, you both would definitely do something irresponsible. Meanwhile, skull's hot. Meanwhile, the one <laughs> just still pointed at him. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Trying to work out whether I'm gonna keep the diamond. I can buy maybe buy something with it. So to be fair, I don't think there's any shops left. Oh, Does anyone want this doll? I don't want your scary doll, Silas. <laughs> Burn it. <laughs> Actually, put it maybe, in the chest. Maybe, and we, see if maybe we should it. find out what it does first. Do you have any more of those identify the joggity woggies? I, I can expend one more like spell today, and then I I'm what tired as hell. I can't make any more fuss on anything. You really want me to touch this doll? Tell you what this doll does. Yeah, I do. I toss yes. the doll. <laughs> I I let the doll hit me in the chest and fall to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, all right, we're fine. And then I pick it back up, and I identify the talking. Doll. If it, it's, it has to be, it has to be a magic item or some other magic imbued object. If it's not, then I just don't know any. Hey, then. Oh, does it look like that? It can look like the, the doll that we described. Okay. Oh. Give me two seconds. Is there a picture somewhere? What does it look like? You said that it has like just like hair, wool for hair or something. Like those troll troll dolls, you know those. Oh ones? yeah yeah yeah. Oh really? 80s like with red hair, red red pigtails. Red, eighties esque. Yep. Okay yeah cool. I right. throw the doll back, and I say yeah it, it's. It's basically got the ability to, um, and I try to explain in layman's terms, but I'm just going to read it out. It sucks. The talking doll repeated whatever phrases it was programmed to speak. To program it, an individual spoke up to six short phases. Phrases, sorry. Each phrase could not be more than six words in length. The doll had to be within five foot uh, of the speaker. These phrases were not permanent. They could be replaced with new ones. The individual then set a condition upon which the doll spoke, such as picking it up or walking past it. So when you found this doll from wherever the hell you found it, because I have no idea, did it speak to you? No. Well, I mean, it's, um, can I ask where you got it from? Uh, some dude said he was hunting a, a thief. That was stealing keys from people's pockets with mage hand. Oh, yeah, but that's probably a bit more. Me. He's the one who blew up Jello's shop. Oh, really? The audacity of this man. Yeah, that makes me sad. But I like Jello. Yeah. I point the wand at myself and cast it to make me scowl. <laughs> you know, you can Rolls just off. roll I charisma. I knew it. Honestly. Roll charisma and then roll a d20. We could just scale because that's like a power you have to do as a. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can scale if you want. All right. Are, are you willing? Yes. All right. Yeah, you can scale. You can't control it for a minute. You have to. You have to roll a d20 though. <laughs> Oh, 
It stays as a wand of scouts. I I look at the doll and I go, speak to me. Talk. Say something. Yeah. Put it in my bag. Good thing you can use this thing for is like setting a trap. You can put it near a door. Someone walks uh, past it, it'll speak six seven. phrases. But I don't know how that would be or anything like that, so you set the conditions makes you wonder what he was pro what the doll is programmed to say and what the commands yeah. will give you that information mm. what are you idiots doing go to jellos you gotta crawl in. all right let's go to jellos now Silas will do what he's wanted to do Sorry. and he will knock on doors saying have you heard of our great lord sithrakis so you, you're going door knocking Oh, we're looking for survivors, right? So if I look at a house that looks kind of intact, I will knock on the door. Yeah, I'm doing the same. Right. Save time. Roll, um, so each of you roll a D, uh, D70. Each. One D70. Alright, there are 142 survivors throughout this wow. whole town, out nice. of 900 people. Jeez. That's more than I expected. Uh, are they able? Are they all able to walk? Or yeah, you see some families that uh, were able to survive because the house started falling in and the beams protected them against the zombies that got disinterested and left. Um, you see some people who had really strong reinforced doors that have these deep claw marks into it. Um, they come out and they've survived. Some people lived in little basements and trap doors. Yep. They all thank you each and head off to the fort. Good. We have no time oh. to waste, you guys. We should be getting back to the swamp and taking this army and... Doing that because I feel like that was no very army. neglected. How far away? Yeah, how far away from we from Jillos? You can make it pretty easily. You're pretty much already there. Can, all right. Can we get an explanation of what the place looks like? Yeah. What do we see? Uh, it's a very sad sight. All oh, you see no. is, is burnt wood and a massive crater <gasps> in the shop. It looks like a comet fell, fell on it. And you see that there are bits of the shop just scattered, like exploded, like uh, something unstable um, was uncontrolled and then the, like a secondary blast. So as you're sort of looking over the shop, most of it is burnt and black and, bur and smoldering. And uh, it's all in rubble. I'm going to go start lifting things, seeing if I can find anything. Roll investigation. You're not really finding much. Most of it's burnt. Has anyone got better investi uh, investigating capabilities than me? I suggest you help me see if there's anything around. What are you looking for? Yeah. People. Oh, see, see, see if there's, see if there's anything in. around. See if there's anything of value. I also look. I'm rolling terrible today. Jeez. Me too. Um. It's Jillo's shop. We should try and get something back to us. Alright. I did, I think I, uh, did I roll that right? I did. Garrett, no, I get you to roll. I've had get you to roll a d4, Garrett. <laughs> Looks good. We've got the best rolls today. My rolls are doing okay, just now. Just... Nah, no, mine have all been pretty bad. I rolled like one time over 20. Over 10. Yeah. Like, I rolled made one roll today over 10. I used all my good rolls on the cheese shop. I know. 
Now I don't. I now I can't tell what the hell that fucking black dust crap is because I can't look at it until next next day. That's alright. Okay. Some, you can have a sleep and try again in the morning. Oh, as well. So you, you seem to pick up. It looks like a fairly long wooden box. You're sort of like scattering across the the dusted pieces, and you see like this um. It looks like a like a cabinet type oh. thing, but it's it's kind of thinner, and it's got this little latch that you can open. Oh. I open it. All right. So in there, you see, it looks like it looks very grey in color, but you essentially see uh, what appears to be uh, scales, scale scales forming an armor. Oh. So it's armor. And it looks like it's made out of like these thick kind of scales, and they're grey scales. What have you got there, Dad? I seems to really like it. Wow. I'm not sure exactly. Um, I'll pack it in my bag for now, and uh, maybe get. Oh, I'll probably hand it back to Jello. We're not looting Jello's store. No. We'll give it back to him. But there's nothing left, so let's keep going. We said we'd return anyway. Uh, do oh. I see any capes? Nope. None. Oh. So, so I, I, I gently pat him. You feel like, control. in your soul, if you were better at investigating, maybe you could have found a cape. Another tear rolls down Silas's oh. cheek. Whenever that happens, I imagine like the really pretty way that Jensen Ackles cries in Supernatural. <laughs> One solitary manly tear. Silas feels dehydrated. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose we better head back. We said we would. And there's those people over here still heading up. At least we got vengeance for the store. And your vengeance for the store? From who? I was just explaining to Biscuit that I killed the guy who claimed to throw a fireball at the store. Oh. Okay. Well, Jello will be happy. I don't think she'll be happy. Great. So what's the plan now? Well, we said we'd go to town and we'd rescue people and investigate it, so time to head back. Yeah, under yep. back. So, we'll speed this along. So, yep. um, the cleanup effort is underway. You see that the ravens and the birds and the pigeons have all been sent out in various directions. Um, and the the town has been mostly destroyed. A lot of buildings are still intact, but the repair efforts will take many weeks. And it'll be a very long time until this city is fully functioning. Um, does anyone break it to Jillo? What their shop looks like. I'll break it to Jillo, and I'll also hand over the thing that I found. Mm, that's a good idea. She, like, looks at it. She ponders it. She goes, yeah, you can have it. This is, um, <clears throat> I'll say, uh, very cute. <laughs> uh, this is uh, scale mail from an owl bear. Oh, how very appropriate. So, um, okay. it is a plus, plus one scale mail. And I'll give it to you because she can identify it and talk to you about what it does. So, I don't know whether you'd be able to find this or not. It says that it exists, but. Yeah. It's, so, it's from, it's from a bear, you said, or a certain type? Oh yeah, scale mail. Yeah, the armor consists of a coat of leggings and perhaps a separate skirt of leather covered with overlapping pieces of metal. Much like the scales of a fish, the suit includes gauntlets. Cool. It, it's not metal though. It's all from from owlbear type. Armor class 14. Very nice. Someone um, turns into bears. It's, it's a medium armor. What does attunement by a creature with a dexterity score of 15 or higher mean. Yeah, don't worry about that. We'll ignore that. 
Oh. Uh, she I offers to them. she offers to identify anything else that you guys need. I, I point to the armor that I'm wearing. Oh, well, um, you are very lucky to have found that. Um, my sponsored snake man. Okay. So, uh, that is adamantium plate armor. Wow. Ooh, nice. Very nice. And then I put my hot water bottle down on the table as well. So this one, uh, this one hurts to touch. Yeah, ah, yes. The the captain enjoyed having a smoldering greatsword. Um, yeah, it's it, it just requires attunement. Um, if you can find a way to hold it for a few hours, um, the the fire will feel normal. It's a great way to stop people from stealing it. So do you have to just hold it while they're healed, or just have it in your backpack? Oh, uh, you can put a cloth over it, like a wet cloth, on each hand. Hold it. Takes a few hours. Okay. Um, Keep that in mind. Alex, uh, it's, it's a plus one greatsword. It does a 1d4 fire damage. Ooh. Ooh. Shit. Okay. Big boy weapon, brother. Mm. He's gonna sit there for a couple of hours doing this. Just be careful with great swords. Humans sort of see this as the human weapon. You'll kind of stand out if the humans see you with it. But you'll also be walking around with a big sword too. Don't worry, Silas. You stand out already, buddy. You'll be fine. Yeah, with that purple cloak. I'm not going for subtlety. Oh, thanks for reminding me. Cloak. And another tear rolled <laughs> down Silas's cheek. Um. So, I I can so. Gold is is valuable. We know this. Gold is valuable because it lets us do certain things. So if you have, if you have like five hundred gold pieces, I can melt that down to access one of the dimensions I can give you another cape but I need that to give you the cape I have 500 gold if we loot something else and we're abundant in money I will let, let you have it until this point I need some goddamn arrows does anyone in this castle have any arrows because I have nine <laughs> Just, just go grab some of the arrows from the, the armory. That's fine. I, you can that's fill where up. I'm going. I'm going to get as many as you, I can possibly fit. You can fill up your quiver. Now, every, everyone's magic weapon disappears as the connection to the dimension disappears as well. Aww. Your magic weapon disappears. It just turns into a faint object and you see it sort of wisp off into a direction. That is sad. A tear runs down Biscuit's face. <laughs> <laughs> and I put my hand I on Celeste's shoulder as I sulk. That was a sick weapon. It was so good. My mine did poison and vine damage. Yeah, that's the so. joining one. Mm. But I've got I've got a quiver full of arrows now, I'm not so scared. I was getting I was getting like range anxiety when you, the the flashing fuel empty lighters on your car <laughs> I thought if I get into a big fight I'm going to be useless um, I want to walk up to Jillo and uh, pull out the bag of black dust and hand it to her to ask her to look at this what is that oh this this is uh, this is this is what thieves use to mask their escape so that is the Dust of sneezing and choking. Um, and <laughs> you sniffed it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I see it. Wondrous item. You want me to read it out? It's up to you. She, she ah. explains to you what it is. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll just add it to my thing. Thank you, Jilly. Sorry about your shop. Walk backwards. Starts crying. <laughs> If it brings you any solace, I found the man responsible for your shop's destruction, and I sent him 
to an early grave. So, so someone destroyed my shop? Some human inquisitor claimed to have thrown fireballs at your shop. So I pull my glaive, the glaive that you gave me, our fitting, through his throat. I appreciate that. You are, you are the, the shop's champion. If only I had money, I would give you another cloak. Don't worry. I appreciate that. that I shall sell this great sword at the next store I find. And with that money, we will have a cape. It will be the best cape you've ever seen. <laughs> and we will, we will, will, I, will, I will become rich. You will rebuild again, Jillo. Don't worry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now, I, I've been tasked with, with healing some of the soldiers that need healing. Um, if you need me, I'll be on the essentially where most of the people are sleeping. Um, you all should get some rest too. I'll do that. I eat one of my rations and then I sleep. Alright, 1d10. I have no food, so I'm just going to go to sleep. <laughs> I can give you a ration, dude. I just got goats <laughs> coming so... out. Oh yeah, I... she killed the goats. Yeah, we chopped it in half, remember? What was it, 1d10 was it, Dipley? Yep. Silas will just stare at the goat that uh, Emma is eating. Uh, sadly. <laughs> just starts like, drooling. Has everyone drooling. got food before I go to sleep? I can give you no. some food. I've got plenty. I've got that. I've still got a ration left, but I don't need to I heal. Will, I give so you... So will put his hand out for one ration. Yep, yes. I give him one. And then I use mine as well. No, oh, look, my rolling bad continues. I didn't need much healing anyway, so I'm good. Alright, okay. and now I'm asleep. So you can get all your spell slots back. You don't you do not heal to full. You get all your spell slots yeah. back. Very good. Yep. Bathroom so, break. Yeah, let's let's have like a five minute break here since it's six o'clock, um, and then when we come back, we can jump back into the adventure. Oh, okay. awesome so I'll far! Be back.
Welcome back, Ben. You too, brother. Ah, some loot. Yes, yeah, some loot, my favorite. You guys got a number of shiny things, but you didn't get Jello to identify many of them. Really? I everything I oh, gave her, I don't. I think, think everything has been identified now. Yeah. Except for except for one thing. Um. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Bloody Frank. I had to do it. I had to find him. That's the imprint on my heart. <laughs> Hilarious. Little Frankie boy. Stabs you and all. That's right. Trying to defend his cheese. I'd do the same thing. That's right. Then he healed me. Massive fuck off potion. Yep. And he pulled out of his dingy cave. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Oh, hello, Alex. Hey. Give me a second. For some reason, my headphones is connected, so it's coming right. just out of my. Right, mate. Yeah. Hey, going, G. Of course, you get that fucking item out of all the items to get you get that one yeah it's all good so typical saying life depends on it from the armor i pulled out nice guess it's a mystery well that's a cool background, Britt. Yeah, she's yeah. moved. I've gone from the city to the mushroom place. I feel like it's that, what is it, Zanga Marsh? Yeah, same. A lot less swampy. Yeah, a less swampy area of Zanga Marsh. <sighs> oh my god, I just absolutely gorged myself on two pies. <laughs> Yum. So and we're back. Yay. All right. So morning rolls around and Chenny lets you know that the group of them are going to have a meeting about what their next plans are. Okay. I get up and go to wherever they are having the meeting. And Silas will follow. I follow. So this is a meeting with Balan, Jillo, Chenny, um, better find his name, um, Chenny's oh, partner, mate. Morin, um, and the Dragonborn, whose name is Rawls, I believe. Let me find his name. Big boy. Well, mate, can, big boy. <laughs> I can get rid of all these fucking items. Taking up 700 tabs. Alright, Drog. Yes. Alright. Um, <clears throat> so this attack was very unexpected. We haven't been attacked like this before. I feel like some of us may know more information about where these attacks are coming from. Guard, you came to me earlier, seeking assistance in the swamps. Is this army from the swamps? Is this what you needed assistance with? Yes. Biscuit knows more. Throw Biscuit, Biscuit under the bus. Oh, hello. Yeah, I, I literally told you everything, Guard, so feel free to elaborate further. Yes. So, 
this army of undead is being created in a swamp. Created in a swamp. If, if you're gonna Not ask... a swamp, sorry, a spawning pool. Okay. A spawning pool for what? Well, originally it was a spawning pool for frog people. Lizard lizard people. <clears throat> lizard people. Lizard people? Yeah. I thought that they had died. Are they still alive? They're still alive, but their numbers are Lots dwindling ever even more so now. Because their spawning pool has been taken over by these corrupted beings that are using it to raise an army of undead. The Acolytes. And if we retake the spawning pool, then the, uh, the lizard people will be able to build their numbers up again. I, why are you helping the lizardmen in their cause? Because they helped us. They freed us. They're the lives. They're the ones who gave us the power to free the dragonborn. Minds. Yeah. You see Droy sort of like holds the amulet in his hand. Says, well, I will fight beside you. No matter what happens with resistance. I will lend my my shield. Chenny sort of like looks uh, amongst the group and then turns to all and says, We will lead 200 odd souls into battle against the cultists to help re to regain some sporting ground. Is this some birthing place? Yes. It's what significance very... does that hold? It's where they have their babies, I suppose. It's where they are creating these undead monsters. The acolytes have corrupted their spawning pool and um, are using it to raise these zombie creatures, which are now starting to frequent more and more. Um, it will be in everyone's benefit if the spawning pool is retaken and the lizard people regain their ability to essentially spawn their own kind again. It is very, very, very heavily populated with these people though. Ben, sorry, Biscuit, went and literally had a look at it and there is so many. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult to take. And that was over half a week ago. Who knows what yeah. the numbers are now? Well, the resist resistance has been forming here for some time. We have some equipment, but we are not a full, fully fielded army with all of the equipment that would be necessary. We have stolen little bits here and there to give people armor. We've seen what the guards around here wear. We've uh, been able to afford some some steel armor. Um, for the most part, we are simple weapons of spears and swords. Uh, the last time you saw that, saw the spawning fields. It's an army of two hundred enough, so it will not lead lead the resistance to its end in an attempt that we're not sure would be successful. What would be able to convince you otherwise? Well, we have we have little little groupings of the resistance in most towns. Um, we know that in one of the towns, <laughs> they are the hub for crafting, and they have a number of smithies there. Um, the town known as Wanborn has been the place that we have sought to gain control over to try and field a fully well-equipped army. So you asked me what I would need to lead 
200 odd souls to harm to save the lizard frog people and all of us everyone i mean look what they've done to your town they're just zombies <clears throat> there is indeed a threat here i'm not clear of their motives i'm not sure if they were after someone specifically well they were after the dragonborn Drog? What do they want with you? I I am not sure. It, it, the memories that I hold are still quite faint. Um, the amulet works its magic every night I hold, hold it. But apparently it is temporary. This, this amulet is the thing that is granting me my freedom. I do not know if this temporary magic will allow me to understand why they come for me but it is unclear at this stage we need to finish the the ritual right from what ritual do you speak of just out of character again we need to do some sort of ritual to complete everything because he still had a necklace on when we were, when you guys are inside the church it's a temporary yeah. relief so we need to complete that ritual as long as he wears it it'll work but if it's removed, yeah, then... but take him back to yeah, Rana, right? We gotta take Rana? Him back, Rana. That that's what I'm referring to when I say that's you need to complete the ritual. Yeah. Yep. As I say to God. You you ask me what would make me make the decision to come risk the lives of the resistance. What would help, you know? Uh, staple well, the fact people. that we need your help. That's a big well, threat. I would, state, I would state the following problems. One, our home base has been nearly destroyed. Our, <clears throat> our uh, place, our foothold of operations has been nearly destroyed from the ground up. <clears throat> we would need to repair and rebuild, and that will take a lot of manpower. Then the other problem that I have is my soldiers are not fully equipped with the best armor or weapons we would need. So that's a concern mm -hmm. I have. The okay. third concern is I do not know the cause that we are fighting for. If you've ever led soldiers, you will know that there are two things that decide how strong and how willing they are to fight to the death. <clears throat> Their last meal and what they're fighting for. We can supply the food. My partner has been very efficient in harvesting the crops. But to lead them to their potential deaths, to save some lizardmen that they know nothing about. <clears throat> you say that they could permanently free the dragonborn? Maybe if you prove it. One of those three things I would reconsider. The dragonborn would need to come with us back to the encampment of the lizard people. I also happen to know a smithy. Honestly, these guys overthrew the kingdom of humans. And now they've just come here with it seems like a smaller army. And who knows what's next. I think if we were to move now, re-equipped quickly, we'd be able to recounter before they could replenish yeah it's and big it's we... bigger than just the lizard guys it's yeah it's everywhere. it's everywhere but i do have a smithy they're back and she's back with the lizard people right now so if we have raw materials she's one of the best well most of the materials go to either the mines <clears throat> grand city or they go to wanborn we can order supplies. Um, it's it's up to Drog. He knows what to do. So Dragon Ball holding the amulet. Well, although they will not question what I order, if I order too much and too greedily, they will send someone to review the orders here. It would take a long time to skim through supplies. Let's order big. <clears throat> and do a ambush. 
We need we need everything now. We can ambush if yeah. they come to inspect, and then from there we can go. And while the numbers are down, we've decimated a decent amount of the undead, but if they still have access to that pool, they'll just rebuild, and we're not going to have the people to take it. Oh. It will take three days for the troops to muster. I've called them all here. We would like a few days to rebuild the town and set up some fortifications for our people. So you have a week. You can take Drog if he's willing to go meet the people. Drog, I will trust your instinct. You can make an assessment on if it's worthwhile us leading our whole resistance army to their potential doom. If you come back and say it's worthwhile, I will trust your instinct and the resistance army will come. Sounds fair. Looks like we're heading back to the camp. How far is Windborne from here? The day Windborne. So it, it's it's a, about <clears throat> a day and a half between Arast and uh, the camp. So let me just throw you guys back here. Yeah. Hey, you like my little drawings? Oh, never mind. They're all gone. Aww. I've got the, the drawing of camp in the line. That's when we stopped. <laughs> <laughs> That's a day and a half. Um, If you travel by foot. <laughs> if there was some quicker means, maybe it would be like half a day. How's that bloody hat of yours going, Biscuit? Well, <laughs> yeah, it's going pretty good. I probably need a few more hours on it, and then it'll be really, I think it would be nice to take us in, hopefully. Okay. And then um, maybe I can get us a ride there quicker. Quicker is better. Yeah. So is that the plan? We're, we're all going back to the camp with the Dragonborn? Dragonborn yeah. has been entrusted to oversee the fate of 2,000 resistance army people. And also order supplies so we can try and outfit the army. <laughs> Bye, baby. It's a naked baby. <laughs> naked baby! Sleep well, baby. Right. So Not sleep time that's yet. The, that's the deal that she offers. And Drog is willing to go with you. All right. We're going to have to take it. And we're going to have yeah. to convince Drog. And we'll come back. And you'll see. Yep. So we do that. We... Uh, so it'll be quicker. I don't know. If it, I need, I need to rest quick, a little bit. Yeah. If it's quicker by a day, with by taking your, your thing, you better... We'll give you the time to build it and rest. Let me have a look and see how we're going. <laughs> All right, you, you see this 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 cat put his his cap over his head. He sort of like forces it down. It's like, Ew! and then like he's just like his body sort of goes a little bit limp, and he kind of like just his head bobbles a little bit forward, kind of rocking a little bit. And then you awaken in the misty stables. It's essentially like um a, like a fairly open ground where the stable is in this um sorry the 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 cart is in this stable where it's just like this little barn. And you've got building materials off on the side and you have this spectral looking horse and the cart that you've built so far is just like a cart little driver's little seat and that's it okay i it's got all the wheels and stuff as well so it's functioning it's just like a plank like a, a flat plank of wood and a driver's seat that's all you got i would like to spend a few hours on it all right i'll get you to roll 3d20s yep um before you do that what yep. are you looking to craft like what style of cart are you trying to make here i'm trying to make a you got three things you can work on yep i'm trying to make an old like a like an english carriage cart that would take um you know comfortably people like usually like four also one Walls, running shotgun the door and yep. like the top Yep. yep. Okay. So walls, door, top. 
So one, two, three. So three D twenties. Wall, walls, door, top. So you can make all three with a crit and you, with a 13, I would have given you a plus. Um, so that's 15 and that's a crit. So you can make all three, but it's going to take you about six, six hours. Um, yeah, I'd do it. Six hours Great. for a less day. That's not bad. And, and you're, scr- you all have a, you all have a point of exhaustion too. Yeah. So if you I'm travel sleeping. by cart, you can remove Pressing. that point of exhaustion. Yeah, that's awesome. I draw a six into the ground as I'm meditating in the place to hopefully understand that they know I need six. Six H, <laughs> if I can. Uh, roll Arcana. Oh, real. Uh... Eleven. You want to do that? You can come out. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I come That's out. Right. I'll let you guys know. It's gonna be take six hours, and it's gonna be a comfy ride. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, I then. perch up somewhere comfy and push that back down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, you work away at this uh, at this cart coming together quite nicely it doesn't look fancy but it's functional yep cool so you guys can do a thing in six hours uh we won't like play it out unless you really want to um but six hours what do you guys want to do i'm gonna have a nap have a nap yeah i'm gonna so you can have too. your spell slots back but you don't heal yeah i'm, I'm gonna nap too so you just wake up hours. We did just wake up, yeah. Oh well, I'll just just chill then. Oh yeah, well we just woke up then. I'll eat one of oh, my yeah. rations. Roll a d10. Silas will help around the fort with the cleanup. Just three. Make himself useful. Cool. Uh, oh, roll Silas. roll athletics for me, Alex. <clears throat> Uh, yep. Oh man, my <laughs> shit rolls continue. All right, I'm not just too so, tired to help. the The current the current orders is to clean out the corpses. They're starting with the closest corpses to the uh, resting area, and the first area that they've assigned you to help out is where Jeff died, and as you're the corpses into the wheelbarrow you remember old jeff his little quips every now and again <laughs> why are we digging a hole my lord i don't fully understand this one another fire rolls down silence's cheek <laughs> every, every moment or two you just reminisce about jeff and your uh, if efficiency is is affected by such but yeah. your strength yeah, allows yeah. you to to, to throw those corpses easily into the wheelbarrow and you have ease, but it's just just the events that happened that slow you down. Sure. Good. All right, six hours comes by. Ben, you have a functional cart. It is fully enclosed and comfortable. It can fit uh, five people in there fairly, I wouldn't say super comfortably, but easily enough. One person will have to sit on the floor. Okay, so we're traveling with a total of Five people, including myself. Yep. Am I able to ride shotgun as like the driver, or do I have to be yeah, the driver? You, you would definitely you be can the driver. Do that if you want. Yeah, I'll be the driver then, so then four people can in the carriage. So I'm not sure. So I didn't go into the details of how this cart travels. Yep. So you command it where to go. You can say uh, a location. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. Am I able to still ride shotgun up on the front? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Can we? Do we see a horse? It depends. He hasn't. He hasn't done the thing yet. Oh. 
I have to sit shotgun, otherwise I get motion sick. <laughs> you'll be sick, and you'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> it goes too fast. All right, uh, I guess we're... I, I guess I'm start walking out. I mean, I guess I start congregating and getting everyone together so that we can head out and say goodbyes and we'll be back in a couple of days, I'm sure. Like that. Maybe even mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more because we want to probably um, show Drac and maybe ha even have a look at the spawning pool again and see what the hell's going on, maybe. Or who knows what's even happened at the camp, you know? So, yeah. Yep. Very good. So you've got all the people together. Drog's there too. He's like, I'm ready. Cool. I'm hey, ready. Where's this I'm cart? guard. Where's this cart? Yeah, like just pushes you like gently. He's like, ah ha ha. ha. <laughs> so I just holds back another back backhanded slap. Just holds it back. <laughs> <laughs> I, like it. <laughs> I like it. Hey, I, I take my hat off and throw it on the ground. So as you throw it on the ground, um, the dust sort of goes, poof, and it makes this massive big cloud of dust. And then you hear like this neigh sound coming from this big dust cloud. <laughs> and when the dust starts clearing, you see this cart has appeared and this sort of like light blue celestial colored like horse um, that's in front of the cart. And you see, Ben, I'll get you to roll a d20 because your, your vision of this cart may not be everyone's vision of the cart. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh, please. Please, God. It's gonna be one. <laughs> oh, oh, so no! oh, oh, wow! I prayed to the, the D D gods. All right. <laughs> so this cart is immaculate. This wow. cart is finely built. You see, with with the 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 boards of wood, because he hasn't had access to like ornate material. He hasn't like ch carved away little engravings or anything like that. But you see that it is is fitted perfectly. It's sort of all smooth. There's no rough edges. The door works flawlessly. It is it is a perfectly crafted cart with very basic materials. Damn, and biscuit. It is, it is very comfortable. This oh, is look, amazing. it's got cup holders. <laughs> cup holders. <laughs> Take it, baby. Well done. Hey. Yeah, thank did you. you. Make this? I did. I made it. Yeah, in my brain. Damn. My mind. Have you ever? Have you ever thought about getting into the cart making business? This is immaculate. Oh, this is my first okay. time. Maybe, I, maybe I'll take a look into it. <laughs> How lucky was that? Holy I cow! Climb in. Oh, I that's climb. so lucky. These, seat, these, these seats are super comfy too. That's crazy. I can't believe that. That's your only twenty now for the rest of the game. Yeah, I've rolled too many. <laughs> not, not, not for fighting or like critting baddies. It's just how good hey. the cart is. Don't wish bad luck on him. He's gonna roll yeah. four more twenties. Is he? Yeah. I've rolled. Four. I've rolled three twenties tonight. That's not bad. Yeah, I've not a bad. One. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's three. Uh... Yeah, this is. Yeah, this is that. That's right. You threw that bloody thing through the, the pillar. The pillar the that weighs one hundred and twenty kilos. Yeah. Um, <laughs> God's God's mother called him. No worries, oh. mate. I think I know that person. All right, so the the card appears. Poof. I'm I'm climbing in. I jump. A good spot. I jump up, jump right up Ready. on the front, just to lead. Nice. So hey I guys, just jump in and jump on Biscuit's lap. Let me get. Cuddle. So, as he jumps into your lap, Ben, all you get is just this face face full of hair. It is like huge rug of hair just in your face. Lovely. And I try to just shove him to my left so he can sit next to me as we ride together. Jesus yeah. Christ, get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. Yeah. Come, you're, you're all in the cart. The camp. Get in. To the camp. And the, the the cart takes off at a, quite a quick speed. Um, it's not a normal cart, and it's not a normal horse. So all the normal sort of rattling and jumping and bouncing of a normal cart 
none of that happens here. It is a smooth journey. It is, it is like it is gliding. That's cool. <clears throat> All right. Good job. So is anyone like resting or anything like that? I don't know whether I can sharpen my swords or fix my gear, but I'm just going to chill and enjoy the ride. On the way back, back to the camp, I start playing I Spy with Biscuit. <laughs> just start or pointing your bloody wand at random people. Scout! Hey, Biscuit! I spy with my little <laughs> eyes something green! I think that's not how the game's played. He led a sheltered life. He doesn't yeah. know how the games work. <laughs> you gotta say the letter of the object. That you can see. E. E. T. E. E. Freeze. Oh, you got it. Excellent, I win. Good game. Now stay silent. <laughs> I win. I win. Good game. <laughs> GG. <laughs> yeah. Alright. So. As the day goes on, the travel is the best travel you've ever had. And as you're going through here, you remember the time when you were first caught and you spent the week or nine days traveling on the cart all the way to Grand City. And just in your own time, you sort of compare the two travels. And you're just so happy to be at this point in time compared to how it used to be. Much more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely more comfortable. So, so rather a than a day and a half, this takes half a day. Wow. So, set off. Uh, so it's six hours from eight o'clock to build the thing. Mm -hmm. So that's 2 p.m. So you'll arrive at 8 p.m. So it's, it's pretty dark. Um, when you see the camp, you see that there are some torches out the front and what seems to be a fairly new constructed gate and this thing looks fairly fortified you see that there's a trench it's dug out in front of the the the, the camp and that there are spikes uh, on the other side of the trench and it looks very fortified and on the spikes you actually see a fair few undead so some of them are still alive and sort of just like clawing about still sort of stuck on the spikes but it looks like there's been some activity here i would like to um use the orb um the glowing orb in order to illuminate myself on front of the cart with guard and um kind of yell out hello is anyone there <laughs> so with the cart so the cart has to come to like and make a stop just before the trench and as you look up, you see that there are, there are some sort of um, uh, lizardmen with their bows drawn. And they kind of see you and they go... <laughs> some time passes. And Ben, I'll get you to make a perception roll. You too, Garrett, because you're at the front of the cart. Oh, oh whoops, not a twin. sorry. No, I didn't do roll. Why is that? Why is that doing that? Roll. You have to put a space. Oh, oh. I am though. D20. You're putting the D. You haven't put the oh, D. Oh, D20 plus. D. Sorry. He did roll another 20. Just did not. you do another 20? Right. Just a dirty what 20. I wanted to do, what I wanted to do was I would go into a private chat. Uh, because only Ben sees this, but because that fucks up the Discord for some reason, I'll just ask everyone to uh, mute themselves until I like do this. Until you see me do this, just like turn off your your headphones so I can see the Gar like what Garrett has. No, he's just muted himself. You need to put the headphone the headphones off. Oh yeah, Garrett's done it. All right. So Ben, you're taken back by what you see. The sight that you see is actually fairly scary. You see Rana is fully black and you see these bright orange spots on him. And you see what used to be white white eyes with green pupils is now black black eyes with red pupils. And 
his appearance has changed as well. He's like a lot more muscular, muscular, and his spear has sort of started getting all spiky. And you see him point to the cart, speak to the guard, and the doors start to open. Still waiting for Alex. There we go. All right, we all back? Yeah. All back? Back. All right. Um, you're also muted, G. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so the gates open up. And the cart trudges forward over this little little ramp that's there. And it enters the camp. The camp is a, it's a bit of a hive of activity. And every single lizardman that you see is actually wearing some some kind of scabby looking armor, but it looks like there's been some activity here and they're wearing armor and they're, they're carrying spears that look fairly well crafted. They've got like thick spears with decent bits of metal on the end. Fancy. And at the, at the end of the, the fort, you see like this forge has been set up um, and you see a lot of light coming from there and yeah. It's well supplied. It looks like someone's been hard at work here. I know exactly who's been hard at work, and I'm eager to go see my friend. So I jump out and head over. All right. So what you see is ladies sort of sitting on this chair that looks like she's crafted out of wood and chipped and carved. <laughs> and she actually has a mug in her hand, and she's she's drinking something. She doesn't see you approach. Lady, how the hell did you get a mug in a swamp? All right, she spits her beer everywhere. <laughs> She's scared shitless because she like didn't expect you. She's like, "What? The, what on earth are you doing here? I didn't know you were coming back." We oh, come give me a hug. She like runs out to you, gives you a big yes. hug. Like, oh, oh, I'm sick of building gates. <laughs> if I, if I never had to build a gate ever again, I'd be the happiest lady you've ever seen. It looks so good here. You've obviously been absolutely smashing it. Who knew? A dwarf loves to smelt. It's just maybe it's in the blood. I've, I've got some beer. Do you want some beer as well? Uh, I know a couple of people who would love some beer. She just grabs. I... She just grabs a mug. You see, there's a keg. She starts getting it and she I just throws yell... it into your hand. <laughs> I, yell, I yell behind me and say, "Do you guys want some beer? How did you get?" beer here how did you make beer you're in a swamp are you really that surprised i mean <laughs> no, actually. i usually find beer i i mean i made it the lizardmen know how to make beer too uh but i just made it better i'm not surprised i take a sip and oh roll constitution uh i'm i'm only taking a sip oh god i bet you made it really alcoholic i'm gonna be dead aren't i that's a beautiful irish by the way love it it's beautiful, isn't it? I love ladies. You should have said you made it out of potatoes. Potatoes? Oh, you're drunk. You're a, you're drunk as fuck. Far <laughs> out. How? I, I put it down straight away. Isn't it good? Holy I, I, shit, I, I'm dead. They, they found these magical leaves out in the forest. A swamp. The, the wet forest. <laughs> it's a wet forest. That's what swamps are. Wet forests. That's uh, really you just astute. grind them together, and <laughs> then fuck? you know you have this. <laughs> Not wrong. How drunk? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna drink anymore. But I look behind me and yell at Guard Biscuit and Silas and say, "If you guys want to drink, yeah, you can have the rest of mine." I'll I'll be right there. I I just wanted to go see a friend as well. Swamp up, right. swamp wet no. forest. We'll, we'll, we'll go to Ben in a minute, but what are you two doing? Do you guys want I'll some really Do you want some alcohol? Oh, yeah, I'll have some alcohol. And I grab a cup, and I'm just like, Whoo! Holy That's nipples, your face. hair is so long. Last time I saw you, it was just down to your shoulders. What has happened yeah. to you? Uh, it's uh, part of the druid way, and I take a swig. Ah, oh, you'll have to Sweet. show me how to do it. And you see her hair, it's like, it's fairly long. It's like down to her butt, but she's a dwarf, so it's not that long. No. It's like, I'd love longer hair. 
You can put them into braids, just like my father's beard. Hey, Snake Man, would you like a drink? Uh, I'm good, thanks. No, ah, uh, uh, sure. Would you like a drink? Oh, it has been a long time since I've had a beer. I would say yes. Oh, Maybe I'd love to out. see him drunk. I give, I just give him mine because there's no way I can take any more drink. All right, <laughs> we're gonna see how well this guy goes. Uh, let me see. He's pretty uh... big though. Dragon boards are pretty tall, aren't they? I really hope Dragon Lady pick it off. Yeah, I ship it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he he drink. This is fantastic stuff. How did you make this? Oh, yeah, the wet forest just has some the leaves. <laughs> you grind them together, and then you ferment them. And it makes this fantastic beer. <laughs> Doesn't it taste just like, tastes like wet lettuce? Uh, I, yeah, wet I don't remember the taste of lettuce, but that sounds accurate. And yeah, they're keen to keep drinking. Uh, I sit, I sit down... And do not drink anymore because I am a skinny little half elf with no ability to have alcohol. You need and... some more meat on your bones. <laughs> yeah, we, we've 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 found that there's there's plenty of boars in the there. Uh, so we've, we've just been hunting them. Yeah, <laughs> and she hands you this chunk of meat. She's so drunk. I take a bite. <laughs> she is oh, so drunk. <laughs> it is it is yummy. It's like a steak of pork on a kebab. Oh, that's good. Yep, she. Where is? Would, would you like some too, Snake Man? <laughs> uh, yes, please. Thanks. Where yeah, is? Yeah, she uh, hands you this Lana. big chunk of meat. Uh, <laughs> Rana. Um, it's always hard to see him nowadays. He's always skulking around. Um, also, he's he's. He just he just kind of blends in with the shadows. Uh, I haven't seen him since it got dark. I've just been at the, at the. At the keg. I can see. <laughs> Alright, so okay. while that's occurring, I'm guessing, Ben, as soon as you got off the, got off the cart, you went and... Yeah. Went to go see Runner. Alrighty. Yep. You find him. He is, uh... Looks like... He, he looks like... He looks like someone that's very high... Like, imagine... How to describe this? Imagine someone with ADHD in terms of their energy and just like how active they are constantly. That's what he's doing on top of the wall. He's, he's like, he's going and looking around the wall, he's scouting, and he's, he's doing something else at the ed edge of the, the sort of fort. Um, and he's, he's, he just seems very hyperactive. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna, can I serve a mute? Um, Alex, seven. Yep, just until he gets back. Um, Rana, we return. Uh, you look a little different. Is everything going okay? Welcome back, Biscuit. It has uh, been been some time. Uh, how has your travels been? Very eventful. Um. I'd like to kind of briefly go over exactly what happened over in Arast and what we did for the town and why we're back. So you have brought back Barry's amulet. We have. It's yeah, currently um, containing uh, the Dragonborn's memories and will over the humans or whatever he had on him. And we need to, I, I guess, complete some sort of ritual in order to set him free. As you're talking to him, it's not the same atmosphere as it used to be. There's something a little bit creepy about this just being in his presence. Like from what I described earlier, yeah. like it's it just puts you on edge. Like like all the hairs on the back of your neck are up. It's just like the way that things are makes everything else feel a little bit uncomfortable. Uh we uh we will need that amulet back. He knows this, yes. He knows that it is not permanent. Have you told him? 
I mean, I don't really know too much about it, but uh, all I know is that it was given to gift as a gift to God, and it was entrusted with God. Is that what you believe as well? Well, the power that is passed on from elders is the same power that Manda had. It is the power to cause generations to, to be born. It is what is needed to make the swamp function, to make the spawning pools work. I have been given some of their power, but more will be needed if we are to birth new lizardmen. I will need that amulet when the time comes. He cannot keep it. Ah, uh, look, that's... I guess it's not really up to me, but... I mean, if that's the way things need to be, then... I guess we can look at that, but I think... I think we need to look at the... Real clear... The clear here. We need to get that swamp back, right? I mean, what have you been doing since we've been gone? You, you look a, a little bit different. Ah. Uh, well. I will have to explain it to you. Because there is a timer now. And that time is running out. And he pulls out the pipe. And you see that the pipe looks different as well. He's made his own pipe and it's brand new. It's kind of like from this mossy log. So it's kind of got like little green bits on it. Um, and he, and he loads it up. Takes a smoke. Hands it to you. Take a puff as well. So he's been having dreams and the smoke that he sort of presents in front of you is the dream of a spell that has been cast against him and has been cast and has been cast and has been cast. It is trying to remove the bits of the amulet from his skin and he's drawing upon his life essence that has been granted from the elders passing on their life force to him to prevent it from being removed. And in this process, it is corrupting his soul. And his appearance is essentially that resistance. And it is also his misuse of the power granted to him to make him stronger than what he is actually capable of. So it's like he's he's running in he's running in overtime. Yeah. He's like expending the life force at a quicker rate. And what you see in front of you is a combination of the corruption that's occurring from the uh, malicious spells being cast against him and his requirement to run at 150% to be able to do the things that is necessary. So that's what you're seeing. You're seeing him being able to use the life force to achieve feats that normally wouldn't be achievable. You see the attack on the fort, which had very similar creatures like the tentacle boy and the golem. And you see him dispatch them near with ease. Mm -hmm. um, but you see that when he went to go stab the the golem, that the last bit of his green skin turned black as soon as he sort of put his spear right through that golem and it exploded to bits. He takes the pipe back and he says, when we take back the spawning pools, uh, I will not join you in future adventures. I sense that this battle will be the end of my people and I will be a lone watcher guarding the rebuilding of a civilization. I sense why you have come. The Dragonborn, why is he here? He's one of the trusted of the allies um if he says it's you know if he gives the okay for the army to come through then they will trust his word and the army will come through to help with the um, clearing of the spawning pool all right i want you to roll a deception Thirteen. 
Did you promise him that I would cure him permanently? Or did you give him that impression? I gave him the impression that a a ritual was was required in order to complete what had already been done for him by the necklace. Alright. So from his eyes, you see like a red liquid start to drip down his eye. And he wipes it across. It's like that power was lost with Berry and Manda. We will have to wait decades before an elder appears. He will not be freed. When we take back the spawning pool, I will take the amulet. And he will go back to what he was. Hmm. Not exactly the best news, Rana, but I mean, we need to make do with what we have. And what purpose will the amulet serve you? The rituals that you saw Barry perform on me is the transferring of his life force to me. Without it, uh, I, I cannot become Barry. With the amulet, it is it is but a fraction of Barry's power. But I, I, I can pull from, from him in his plane of existence. It will take many years. But with the amulet and the spawning pools, I can save my people and I can become Barry. I think it would be best if you were able to Come with us to um, help explain this to the Dragonborn and hopefully come to some sort of realization, <laughs> if that's okay. You want me to explain this to the Dragonborn? Is he not your friend? He's our friend, but um, we were under the impression that uh, a ritual would be able to be completed by us here at the swamp and you guys to help him. Uh, I just want... Hopefully you could explain as to why that can't really happen now. Uh, I can explain it to him, but I am not leaving my people. I will not go back to the resistance to explain to them. No, no, That's no, clear, uh, yeah? no, yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I must explain something to you. Uh, you saw me from the cart. I'm a little bit ashamed of what is happening uh, not many of my people have seen me in this state only only Rudolph knows what is happening I would prefer it to stay that way until the battle day occurs are you ashamed of the way you look? Uh, this is a cursed form, no? I mean it's a form taken on by that of someone who is proving themselves against the evil that is attacking them, right? Just a defense mechanism that you've thrown up. You're trying to save others by doing so. This would only show more confidence in the, the people you lead. Ah, uh, it's good. I, I am, I am two, I am, I am two battles away from losing who I am. This this will cause fear. This is the same story as the Wrathful Leader. Have you heard of that story? Has Barry told you? Wrathful Leader. So, you don't know that story? Yeah, okay, good. Uh, no, I, I, I've never heard of that story at all. Well... Uh, I do not want to go off the ramparts. So if the Dragonborn wants to come up here, I will tell him that he is a, a slave. Once the amulet is re returned to me, I will tell him that his freedom is temporary. It may not come as nicely from someone who is not a friend. But if you want to have me say it, I will say it. Um, 
He may not take it as well from a stranger. That's okay. Leave, leave it with me. Um, thanks for speaking with me, Runner, and um, I'll head back with the party and find out how we should relay it more calmly. Uh, make sure you do tell him as well. It is important that you tell him his fate. Yeah, I'll tell him. And it I am. Um, good to see you, my friend. And you, Rana. Swamp blessings. And to you. Yeah, he goes back to his place. I jump back down to the party and see everyone drunk as hell. Well, I mean, who's drinking alcohol? It's the, the paladin, I think. Garrett, maybe? I stopped because yeah. obviously I've got absolutely You're no... already drunk. You got tanked. You're already there. You're already white I took girl. One, I, took, I took like <clears throat> one sip and I'm already asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Silas is not drinking. Uh, I'm just going to grab a drink, actually. It'll be two seconds. Garrett, what are you doing, brother? You I drunk? A quick... Hello, what are you doing? I'm a drunky boy. You are? Did you have a drink? Yeah. I had a drink. Did you roll Constitution? Roll he Constitution. Probably, he'd probably be better than, better than me. Yeah, you can take a drink. Yeah, it, it tastes great. It's like really refreshing beer. Remember, this is like medieval times, and like, it it's like lettuce beer, but it's it's quite tasty. It's like quite kind of sweet. You can Lettuce hold your alcohol beer. better than me. <laughs> I'm good like that. I knew you'd be one to take beers. This this wee little elf here can't take much to drink. <laughs> one little one little nip and she's already <laughs> off with the fairies. <laughs> Not good. I think I think you store all the drunk in your hair. Look how long that rug is. How long did it take you to draw that hair out? Oh well, it's just. I love when we left, lady. it was about shoulder length, and now that we're back, it's down to me ass. Ah, oh, we should we should dance. Do you want to dance with me, long-haired man? And she just doesn't. She asks for consent, but she just grabs your hand and starts dancing. And I just willingly start dancing. <laughs> All right, roll performance. I pick up my hat, by the way, and put my hat back on. And the cart disappears. It's like a poof. <clears throat> she is drunk as fuck. She's like. Pulling you sideways and like stepping on your toes, Ow. and you're not you're Ow. you're just as bad. You you're not drunk, but her leaning you off to the side is making you look like an idiot with your dance. <laughs> yeah, I... oh, and my so... hair blows in the wind. Ah, oh, so pretty. <laughs> so Ben, you see a dwarf manhandling Garrett and th like. Essentially, just like tossing him around. She's really they strong. look like they're trying to dance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm just gonna watch in awe. Yeah, it's great. It looks like they're having fun. Having a great time. Where's the dragonborn? What's he doing? He's sitting on the chair that's been crafted by Lady and he's having a beer and he's having a great time. He's happy. He's got a big smile on his face. Um, I Silas joined. Silas is just staring into the fire. There's a fire, right? <laughs> yep, yeah. yep, yep. There's a fire. There's like a think of it like a um a camping fold-out chair, but it's made out of like wood, and it's been like just crafted from lady. Of course, she makes everything. And there's a big keg. And there's some wooden mugs. And then there's two idiots dancing. Very badly. <laughs> I sit down near the down. fire. Yeah. I just join and sit down in the festivities and don't really say anything. I hand you my mug and say, be careful. It smells really good. It's like fresh beer. It smells refreshing. I take Good a drink. One. Roll constitution. <laughs> Um, it better than mine. We're gonna do the D. Sixteen. You can take beer too, obviously. It is delicious beer. So, um, it's it's made from special leaves found in the swamp that have been grown together 
into like flour and then fermented. Um, the lizard men seem to know how to make this, but as you drink it, it's got like a kind of like flavoring of like really flavorsome, crisp lettuce, but it's actually quite good. Although that sounds horrible for a beer, it's actually <laughs> quite nice. It's like light, it's not a heavy beer, and it's quite sweet. Cool. Okay. Yummy. I'm just laughing. Uh, but it is dancing. strong. You can like you can like taste the the near poison alcohol in it. It is really <laughs> strong. But you can take it. Okay. Well, it's better than me. You can have the rest of my log. <laughs> All right. And lady finishes her dance with the longest hair man in the whole tribe. <laughs> Sits down. It's like, so what's your story? Well, what's been happening? I've just been building a fucking gate like for days. It's just been nothing but gate, gate, gate. And then, and then, then, then the, the leaves from the wet forest. <laughs> so what? So tell me. In for, I'm bored out of my brain. Tell me what's been happening. I give her oh. an overview oh. of, yeah, of our battle. And T tell I, tell me, I... long haired man. Speak, speak the words of niceness into my ear. That's Ooh, what you know. She That's likes you. you. She likes you. <laughs> Fighting a horde of zombies. Um, my zombies. Tell me more, Daddy. <laughs> ASMR. Oh God, the zombies. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Uh, there's, there's been a few uh, zombie attacks here. Um, there's been some really weird creatures. Did you did you see like any me like mechanical type type monsters? You've yeah, had we had some one too. Of them too. Oh, the leader of the Lizardmen are a very good, very good, very strong Lizardmen leader. It seemed to just dispatch them in just seconds. It was insane. He's, he's got a big cape, like cloak on. Um, I think it might be just to like be stealthy, but uh, he puts the cloak on and then he just destroys these me mechanisms. Uh, he's been very effective, very good. Is this Rana? Oh, yeah, Rani, he's great. He just destroys anything that comes near the, the camp. I look over at Biscuit and sense that he is kind of a bit down. You, and I you look... can roll Perception. And if you're right. successful, Ben can tell you how he would appear. Perception. In the, in the background, you hear yeah, Clarice, Clarice mutter, I had a cape once. <laughs> 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 All right, Silas, roll for sadness. <laughs> roll get for a, sadness. You get, you get a bit of alcohol in you, you might start crying. Aww. Oh, I didn't drink. Oh, That's right. No, no. All right. Just roll for <laughs> sadness anyway. <laughs> I can I can make you scowl. <laughs> 15 is a magic number, right? Hold on. All right. You failed. You failed your cry check. All right. You remember the cloak. You remember Jeff. You remember the hole. You remember the shop. You remember. Never you don't have any of that anymore. You don't have your Aww. Jeff. You don't have your cloak. You don't have your hole. Two tears. Roll Two. down. Two tears. <laughs> don't have your hole. <laughs> All right. So Biscuit can describe the kind of emotions that can be perceived from his demeanor okay so biscuit can say how he would be perceived okay so i can be Garrett was successful yeah i can be perceived as someone who is um happy to be there but doesn't show any emotion on his face that he's happy um yeah, I guess that's the emotion you could see is that we're in a happy environment and I'm just not smiling. I'm a little curious. And if there was a friend to see you and try and make a judgment and they were successful in being accurate on how you felt, what would that what would that friend perceive? Um because it's your character. I don't want to describe it. Yeah, just um, being very uncomfortable about the whole situation. That's what you get, Garrett. I go down and I sit down next to Bishkek. And I nudge him and I just say, What's wrong? 
Uh, I would rather just leave it for another night until we've kind of enjoyed our first night here and everyone's enjoyed their time. But um, just between you and I, Rana has been taking a bit too much more than he can handle. Uh, I think it's very serious. And yeah, I guess we'll we'll find out a little bit more tomorrow once once we kind of had a, have a bit of a chat with the whole team. Okay. Very good. So you guys have a good night. Um, those people who aren't aware of that kind of interaction, you have a great night. There's there's so much meat to eat and it is delicious. The beer is fantastic. Drog is having a great time. Lady is drunk off her fucking face. <laughs> um, and you all have somewhere warm to sleep and it is really comfortable. Looks like a lot of work and crafting has been going in to make this into a really functioning place. And... You know, it's a swamp, even though it's cold, it's kind of humid, so it's kind of warm. And they've got the forge and the fire. You guys have a fantastic sleep. So from the food, if you need to heal, you can have a D10. Excellent. We can heal from that back slap. Gee. I need to. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> well, that heals a back slap. <laughs> True. <laughs> You get that back. Yeah. Ow. Right. Great. When everyone's done healing, it's morning. Um, the sun rises and it's it's warm against your skin. It's a cool morning. A little bit more colder than what you'd normally expect. Um, there's frost on the grass around you. Uh, but you're near the, the smoldering fire, near the forge, and it's nice and warm where you are, and it's kind of nice and cozy. It's like you're in bed on a cold day, and it's nice and warm. It's kind of hard to get out from those blankets. And um, there's food there, and Lady is snoring loudly, despite her being easy 30 meters away from you all. <laughs> and Drog is sort of nestled on the chair on, with a little blanket on himself, and he looks comfy as a peach. 30 meters, by the way, is 60 yards. Wow, so, she is so away. loud. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's, there's activity, there's lizard men walking around. You see some of them carrying in some boars. Looks like they've gotten really effective. Like, it's it's quite surprising. They've gone from, like, a tribe of, like, loincloths <laughs> to, like, fairly well-armored, fairly well-armed, and efficient. And like, there's a gate, there's fortifications. It's really different. <clears throat> That's my my building friend. I'd like um, to um run around to everyone in our team and kind of let them know that we need to have a little bit of a group chat to decide what to do next. I I gather that, gather that this is quite unusual, so I very silently, not to wake up. Obviously, the dragonborn. And I follow. I also follow. Silas will also get up and follow, trying to hide his tears from the night before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Drog is his father. He hasn't had much to drink in a really long time. He hasn't had time to be himself, so he is he is snoozing like a baby in that chair. He looks so comfortable, Aww. and Lady is absolutely passed out. <laughs> She's not waking up for at least six hours. Damn. All right. So where are you guys going? Are you guys just doing it in the middle of the camp? No. So or are I'd you like going to... to anywhere secret? I'd um... like to go into the kitchen area where the uh, where the, all the knives and things used to be, up right of that area camp, by the kitchen area. Okay. All right. So. In this kitchen area, you see, like, the ground is chipped. Like, the brick is chipped with these deep cuts into it. And there's these massive grooves in the ground. And it looks like someone has got, like, a big battle axe and is, like, chipped into it with massive force. And it's, it looks it looks a little bit unsettling because there's uh, just these chips and, like, holes and marks and scratches. But yeah, here you are in the kitchen. Who the hell's been in here? What's up, Biscuit? So, uh, this was where the battle happened. Where? 
God. <clears throat> All this. Anyway, um, I look around to see if there's anyone in here. Hold on. God, can you roll a d20? I sure can. PTSD. Uh, we'll come back to that. Sorry. Continue. Um, do I see anyone else here in the kitchen? Or like in the... In the no, wait. no one is in the building. No one. No one is here. This is completely abandoned. Cool. Uh, I'd like to sit down at one of the tables and invite everyone else to join. Well, and I'd like to literally explain everything I saw from front gate of Rana, eye color, appearance change, more or less looks like his body and things around him are becoming corrupted. <clears throat> and also the dreams that he shared with me that night as well. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to describe it. So you can describe it out of character if you want to, if you want to like skip doing it in character, but you can use the words and you can talk to them. Um, it's hard to describe word for word, but it's as if his green skin has turned black and his eyes had changed to a darker demonic color as if his whole body and soul is now flipped to the wrong side but he's had to do that in order to maintain a continuous defense on the camp so he's more or less sacrificing himself and his body and soul to maintain defense on the camp um yeah it's absolutely and he's gonna need the amulet back in order to become what Barry was once upon a time. And he also can't do the ritual to save the Dragonborn. The mindless song again. What? Got it. So there's Terrible. no one that can do the ritual at all. Not He's for many, many years. So Rana becomes one with the amulet. Again. That's that's what he told me. But um, honestly... I don't even know what to believe anymore because he's become so corrupted he could be saying things that are to spin my mind, you know what I mean? So Yeah. And yeah, something doesn't seem right. He's um he'll be there for the final battle though. If we are to go into the spawning pool, he'll be there to help, but then he'll need the amulet in order to um like restore himself and become an elder and be the um the ongoing spawning of his future generations i don't know how i feel about that but yeah, yeah either I do really i that's why it. i wanted to tell you guys <laughs> we need he looked, to he looked like he looked like a dark it. sith lord wow. in, on the dark side but he spoke as if he was on the light side he shared his dreams with me so it Very is good. still Rana, but we don't know how long he will be. Or oh, which Rana? I mean, yeah, I have no idea. Well, Hard to... we we can't really make the decision about whether or not we can trust that just yet, anyway. But at least we have some time. We need to break the information to the Dragonborn. Oh, and here's yes. And once that amulet's removed, he'll become. Unless we can figure out a way to do that asset. So, the the person who freed you guys is gone. Oh, that's Rana. That is Rana. Well, I, I don't know what you're talking about. The same person? Yeah, um, well... The same visual person? Yes. But he is, he is still Rana. And he can't free the Dragonborn? Uh, no. As did you guys? No, because it takes an elder to do so, and Barry was an elder. Barry's gone. Yep. Great. Okay. Is this information we should share with him? If we don't even know what we're planning on doing? Well, this is more or less why I wanted to come to you guys to decide what we should do, because he is more or less the army. The, the yes or no. So yeah. we need to convince him. It's I mean, gonna be hard to convince someone that to do this, and then we'll go back and be unfreed again. So, 
I mean, let's look at it at another way, yeah? We don't do this at all. Don't fight this army at all. What would be the repercussions? Kind of like, whatever the... It's like, we've been progressing here without a choice. If we had a choice, what would... Yeah. Well, we wouldn't be here, so... From what I saw, and what I described to you when we were there, it was crazy, but I don't know if these guys stand the fathoms of... I think we go with the most amount of people to survive option. Oh, the Dragonborn? He seems honourable, but I think it's very hard to convince someone to... I don't know. I feel like he would be honourable enough to help anyway, but on top of that, it's very hard news to take that you're just going to become a mindless zombie again and with no, no ability to change that at all and ask for his help at the same time, so... <coughs> And ask questions soon. I think, I think I would want to know the truth. We can only put it to him. We can only put it to him and go from there. There's no, I mean, one, at one point he's going to find out anyway. What do you think, Dad? I would tell him the truth. afraid we'll lose the army though seems like ran is a one person army at the moment god i'm uncertain about the state of rana's mental state at the moment i'm just doesn't seem right his mental he's state <clears throat> he seems to be in a in a sense of urgency as if everything has to happen now and that he needs that amulet it's, it's almost like he has a, an ornate pool when but, barry gave you the amulet what did he say to you do you remember exactly what he said i had the, yeah not off the top of my head i'm trying to remember but what's the general idea did you, did he yeah did roll you... a d20 See if your memory is rekindled, and then I can clarify if, if you're successful. How nice is that? Mm. Oof. A good place to uh, my roll. Yeah. Well, I'd say a bit so, having to go back and watch the video again. Yeah. <laughs> so, what I would say is, in your mind, everything's a bit foggy because of the time that's passed, the trauma of the battle. You think of the little spot that Barry left for you in your care and that he said that it was a place of of peace and comfort that he had found and that it was useful for casting his ritual spells and for channeling magic. There's a sense that if you return to this place, you may remember further details. Or you also remember the church incident when you spoke to Barry. You wonder if the amulet and the ritual spot can be combined together to maybe ask Barry some questions. I need time to think about this to try to remember exactly what Barry said. Um, so I'm going to take a bit of time on my own and try to remember. Okay. Yeah. Barry left it. Go ahead. Your capable hands, so we'll trust you with that. Um, and there's there's a reason why he left it with you and not with Rana. Just know we probably yeah. won't have too much time before questions are asked. Yeah, no, I get that. Go for the it. One thing that I do remember Barry did say to me was that he was worried about Rana. So he should be. See? Okay. Well, go forth. Find out stuff. So I'm going to head back on my own to that special area. All right, stand by. So everyone but Garrett, are you happy to stay in the fort and just talk? Like that's what you guys are doing? Well, we, we can't make a decision because we need to know if there's even a possibility of 
restoring the Dragonborn and whether or not we should trust Rana. So we need to get that information from Guard, and Guard's really the only one who can find out. So I made Garrett roll a d20. So I'm going to explain what happens there. And then I'm guessing if you want to approach Drog, Garrett? Yeah. Are you approaching Drog? All right. So there's going to be a few things that are happening. So there's going to be a bit of time there. So I'm just going to know what you guys are doing so I can like set that in place and then like proceed with the story. I'm just going to help her, help out. I'm just waiting for him to come get us. So if there's, if, if there's a lot of time to pass, then I'm just going to help out in the fort. Would I would I be able to find some like wooden swords or something like that? Uh yeah, like they have practice swords. Like this is like the efficiency of this place is crazy. Like from the lizardmen that are poking the the target dummy is going, is this what the humans do? Like there's there's like a standing army. Like they have wow. they have armor. They're practicing. Like Rudolph is like tra- trying to train them. It's like an unexperienced really strong person trying to train people like no you just you just hit them harder so that's happening so okay. if, if oh. you want to like help them out you can yeah no, I just... i'd like to get some oh you get us no i'm just gonna run around and if i take out zombies from a from a top post then i'll do that but i'm just helping out waiting to hear back from god i'm gonna get some practice weapons some like practice daggers and a, and a glaive and i'm gonna throw the biscuits at Come, little cat, let's spar. Let's what? Spar? Spar. You're on. And I jumped to my feet. <laughs> <laughs> right, you, you two roll a d20 each. That's cute. You haven't sparred with anyone since your big friend. Okay, nice Ra- to Wait for Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. oh no! You're gonna get smashed! <laughs> Alright, All right, let's, let's see it. We're praying! I love, I love he rolled a lot as well. D20 number four. Oh my god. <laughs> You're both so tired, Audrey. We must look like a pack of children just going at it. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so Silas, awesome. you're like dehydrated <laughs> as fuck because the the meat that you've been eating was really dry, yep. so it's like sucked all the moisture out of your body. So you, as you're fighting, you feel like you're a little bit weaker, and the the army is still getting used to it. It is fancy mm. as fuck armor. You still don't know if it's like magical armor. Who knows? But you're not used to it yet. Um, so biscuit just gets the upper hand of you. So, Ben, you get inspiration because you won the spa. Aww. Beautiful. Yay, Biscuit. Thank you. Just like... <laughs> You're both Silas, fighting crappily. There's a part of you inside you that goes, I wonder if I'm wearing magical armor. Who knows? <laughs> I, asked, I asked her to look at it. Yeah, she said it was adamantium because she could see it. She didn't. She didn't cast inspect on it. What the? Heck? She was like, "Yeah, it's blue. It's adamantium." Mm. Cool. Yeah. It is. As if yeah, there's a few things that went into. All right. Cool. So that happened. So Garrett, um, the D twenty that I had you roll that you were successful with. Huh. I walked into the fort, and there's no human in this fort. All these marks on the walls. Wasn't there a human that did these marks on the walls? I wonder where he is. He's been missing for a few episodes. The guard. uh... I haven't really noticed that he's gone until now. How strange. I turned to... Biscuit and Silas, and I'm like, what happened to the human guard that was here? Was his name Jeff as well? I think so. Oh, I'm sorry, Silas. Another tear. I'm so sorry, triggered. I'm just not going to talk to Silas. (laughs) But wasn't there, like, what happened to Jeff? I mean, he who shall not be named. 
I can't remember. Um, there's so many damn Jeffs in this place. Humans are kind of in the back of my forefront, like uh, in the back of my mind. I don't. I I can't remember. He was the one that was in love with Manda. Yeah, I don't know where he went. We left, right? He was here when we left. How come you don't remember him then? I do remember him. All right, where is like, he? <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to know. Yeah, exactly. He spoke I with know. Rana. Did he? Don't did he ask me. I'm sure Rana doesn't give a crap about. It. Rana cares only <laughs> about the amulet. <laughs> Rana's been about... stabbing goblins and shit. What about your dwarf friend? Wasn't she left behind with him? How many dwarf? Imra. My dwarf I friend. I don't have yeah. any dwarf friends. <laughs> I can't remember the. Dwarf I don't have friend. any dwarf friends. What are you asking me for? I don't remember any dwarfs. <laughs> Lady. No, Lady. we turned. We, it was when we turned up to the camp. It was just me, me and her, and um. The lizard people who found us in the swamp. That's what so timeline-wise, right? So <laughs> Brit had arrived a few days after the big sad siege thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, like it was I like four up. or five days away. I was here looking for Rollo. That's why I turned up because Rollo's mine. Oh. Oh. Rollo. Who's Rollo? Rollo's the oh. little tabaxi. Oh. Uh, the one, the one Ben broke bread with in the little car carriage. The one I keep we searching to... for Rollo. He's mine. The one I tried I to leap for... for for the crabs. Remember? I look for the, one of the nearest lizard people. You going to what? I'm gonna go and ask one of the lizard people what happened to Jeff. Hey, you wanna All ask right? me? <laughs> I'm just holding sticks. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know uh, Ben became dog. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I'm so good! I'm so <laughs> so good. That's what happens! I saw some stupid lizard guy just in the corner going, What? I'm, I'm picturing like the bloody Monty Python and the Grail, Holy Grail. What? what? It's just, just a little rabbit! I just told no. all the sticks for all the other guards. What you want with me? That's not what happens at all, but that's hilarious okay. as fuck. That Sorry. so funny. Yeah. That that so good. Good. All right. Oh, so, so there funny. are there are very few guards. There is there is one or two on the the ramparts, and you see one very large lizardman on top of the the gate sort of wall ramparts. But the other the other lizardmen are busy doing things. Usually they are either sparring or they're bringing food in or they help it. They're helping with the forge. Oh, I so look at the guy that's. <laughs> Like standing guard. So like on the ramparts, because that's yeah. the only place the guards are. Yeah. So there's two. There's one like moderately sized one, and there's one that looks huge. I speak to the one that looks huge. <laughs> go big or go home, man. <laughs> All right. So as he turns to you, like you recognize this guy to be Rudolph, because he has this massive scar in his belly, and you see all these scratch marks across his shoulders. He's the guy that nearly died. Oh, Rudolph. Hey, how you going, buddy? Oh, good day. You are the adventurers that are friends with Rana. Uh, I am guarding this post. What can I do for you? Well, I, I remember there was a human named Jeff that was here. What happened to him? I haven't seen him in a while. Oh. He told Rana that the actions... Rana was taking was not sufficient. His revenge consumed him. He asked where the sporting pools were, and he took off. We have not seen him since. Okay, that's not ideal. He did. Great. Sounds like he might be dead. <laughs> Remember, I told you. Oh, I, I can't really remember. He was very capable as a fighter. Um, whether he went the whole way or whether he changed his mind, that is not clear. I always found that one to be odd. Uh, he seemed to spin on a dial with his opinions and thoughts. 
First he thought of us as slaves, and then he thought of himself as one of us. I never welcomed him into the tribe. He always sickened me. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> thanks for that insight. Um, I'll leave you to it so you can continue guarding. While I just go and talk to my merry men of adventurers. I love how political you are. You're like, got this guy who's like, I hate him. And you're like, okay. Okay. <laughs> Time to go. <laughs> you do you, buddy. <laughs> So uh, if you if you see if you see the snake man, pass my thanks on to him. I have led a good life since he saved me. I appreciate that very much. Rana has told me to stand guard here and control the gate, so I will not leave my post. But if you see him, let him know that what he did, I will never forget. I'll uh, I'll let him know. And I'll make him cry more. And I'll make Marsh's him cry blessings. more. <laughs> Marsh's blessings. And I throw my hair behind my shoulder and walk off. Uh, it is I... thick. It is like a rug. It is like a cloak of hair. It is That's long, so luscious, healthy. It is not stringy. It is thick at the bottom. It's like a rug. Well, you see, whenever I get time to rest i spend three hours just brushing wow. it brushing it brushing it that's how it's so beautiful very good yeah that happens i go i go back to the group and i explain to him that jeff's left to go to the spawning pool so he's most likely dead um and the guard that silas saved he thanks you for saving him that's right great to hear he's doing well well, then that human's definitely dead because what Biscuit and I saw was absolute just endless zombies. Yeah, unless they're lucky. They're definitely a scary place. Mm. So I think I need time to connect and meditate. Right. And ponder this. So I'm going to head to that nature spot, that berry always went to all right so you remember where it is it's a little bit outside of camp it is it is like this little um pergola but it is made out of roots from a tree um if you can imagine it right it's like lots of little like roots that sort of like form these waves that form this like little it's like this and it comes in like that and the things that you sit on are actually the roots that are that are bending in like that yeah. It's got like a this little stone table and you see some of the scribbles left by by Barry, some of the leaves that are packed underneath the, the table. And you see the quill and you see the little little vial of mud and the little vial of water. And it's his little bench. I sit down and I try to sense any sort of magic that might have a connection to Barry. So, without the amulet, you can roll a d20 with disadvantage. You get to choose one of these. You get to roll a d20 with disadvantage, or you can expend two spell slots. I'll expend two spell slots. As you throw some magic into this, and you, you sit down and sort of cast your magic, sort of wind sort of coerces around this, this structure, and... You fall asleep, and you wake up, it's lush, green, and there's a forest, and on this little mound of grass is this tree. Underneath the tree, you see Barry, just sleeping away next to this bear. I just admire Barry from afar for a few minutes, I just, ah, oh, Barry. Oh, oh. so adorable. He looks peaceful. This is like Druid Heaven. He's happy. Yeah. And I slowly approach Barry and just kind of say, Hey, the, Barry. The bear, the bear wakes up as you approach and sort of just like looks at you. And, and sort of like, raw, raw, raw. And I just answer back, raw, 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 raw. <laughs> Not so no, happy. I'm... It, kind of, it kind of like bristles its fur as you sort of mock it. 
And I, I just, I'm like, sorry. I, I just need to talk with Barry. This is important. <laughs> Nuzzles Barry and then just lumbers off. And Barry kind Thank of you. Walks, wakes up. Says, God, please come sit. He doesn't have that old man voice anymore. Barry, you're looking very, very refreshed. Sound oh, happier too. A long night of tending to the forest that never dies. See, there's, there's just a part of us that just wants to grow things. And when things never die, you just, you just keep growing them. I've been very tired, been sleeping a lot. The rest has been so peaceful. I did not expect to see you so soon. Well, I I didn't expect to see you either. Um, but I'm, we're at a bit of a crossroad. It, it seems that Rana has gotten past to a point of uh, to a point of no return, with his anger consuming him. Um, and he needs that amulet now. He's... What do you mean? I have been asleep since last we met. What has happened? From what this kid has told me, his skin is You haven't is all seen him out. yourself? I haven't had the chance, no. Once this kid told me the news. Starts digging. And you see as he digs, there's like this little pond that appears. And he gestures out for your hand. And I grab it. He pulls you down. And he sort of like holds your hand. And he's like, oh, his legs crossed. And he puts his hand on the pool. And he kind of gestures to you. And he looks at you. And he looks at the pond. And I I follow his eyes with my hand and touch the pool. He sees some sort of like warmth and energy reminate through the pool. And he starts to like stir the waters and disturb it. And then as he lifts his hand away, you see the water dropping from his hand. And he, and he sort of like gestures for you to do the same. I do the same. I follow his guidance. All right. So what you see, you see Rana, but he is completely black. He's got spots of orange on his skin. And you see what used to be green eyes in white pupils. You see now black eyes and red pupils. And you see that there's there's like these little jagged edges coming out of his skin. Um, now in this image, you can see Rana fully. You don't see him clothed. But you can tell that he wears a cloak that covers most of these little spikes that come out of his skin. You can see um, the sort of like aura that you can sense from the spell. is There's just like a lot of anger that's coming through in desperation. And, and you hear an audible gasp from Barry. And Barry's like... I, I did not know. Have you have you spoken to Rana? I haven't spoken to Rana yet. I was hoping to get your guidance on how we could save him and the Dragonborn. Because without the Dragonborn, we have no army to take back the spawning pool. Dragonborn? What, what's what's this? Oh, that's 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 the. The ritual That's... of lending that I gave yes. you. Yes. That's Remember right. what I told you with the ritual of lending? It was temporary. Yeah. It is temporary. It must. It is power that must be given back. So with the last portion of my life force that I gave to that amulet, it is essentially like my connection to the plane. So with my influence, I can pro act as a block to the power that the humans have put onto you lot and the Dragonborn. Uh, because it is a temporary existence, a temporary connection, that power must be passed on to the leader of the tribe. It is similar to the ritual that I've done to Rana multiple times. It is the same power... But instead of given to Rana, it is put into a stone. But the destination must be met. Destination cannot be interrupted. 
That power is destined to Rana, and to him it must return. It does not remain permanent. Is there any other way that we can release the Dragonborn from the human's control? I spent some time before my passing looking into how it was that Rana could free you. Because Rana is not an elder yet. There is a threshold that must be passed to become an elder. When you saw me, I was uh, an elder lizardman. I wasn't spry and young like I feel today. To cross that threshold is to take on such a burden that it will age him significantly. And in that aging process, when you give up so much of your physical prowess, it grants you the power to remove these curses. That is, that is our tribe's purpose. The freedom seekers we are. Uh, for, for Rana to become an elder, he will need the last gift I give him. He will need that. And when he has that, he can start learning the powers. It took me some 20 years to learn the powers of our people. So the Dragonborn ultimately has a death sentence. Well, Amanda was the only other one with the powers. It was the Spawn Mother. The other role of our people. It's like a female elder. When the female takes on the role of the Spawn Mother, they are in charge of the Spawnlings. They are there to grow the eggs. They are there to take care of the younglings. That is their charge. Mander is... was... was... hundreds of years old because of her charge. Now with her passing, Rana is the only one who can become an elder and spawn new spawnlings. And it will be some time before a new leader is born. Okay. I'm sorry this was not the best of news. Um, but this this image of Rana is scares me greatly, God. Uh, the the coloration is the misuse of the powers. The spikes and the eye color that you see. Ingar is seeking to control Rana. Is seeking to rip the amulet from him. They are casting some spells. He is being assisted by other magic users. This, this is not a thing that can last very long. But with the amulet, that'll block it? Or if you give Rana the amulet now, I'm sure he will have the power to overturn the corruption from the casting of the spell. But his misuse of the powers to overcome his limitations has still corrupted him. He will need the spawning pool, and he will need time. Okay. Do you remember Jet? Ah, the human. Um, yes. I've dreamt of him. Um, how is he doing? He ran off. Um, he wasn't happy with Rana's uh, non-actions and he went to the spawning pool himself and he taps you on the shoulder and he's got a bit of a grin on his face and he says I worked it out you know how he became human exactly that he was turned he was turned he was never a human Seems like the humans have run out of the ability to procreate. They are stealing people. They are turning us into humans. He was always a lizardman. Wow. Oh. Say something. Wow. So that's... Right, so that means the Dragonborn is in threat of being turned human as well. If you're influenced by the spell for so long, 
You actually just become one of them. Do you have any idea who is where this spell is originating from? I tried, God. I tried. There are not many elders in this part of the forest. And he sort of points out, and even though it's like this little comfortable little mound of grass and this little tree, when he points out, it's it's almost like your vision sort of like zooms past the forest and you can see where all the elders are. They are like a couple of thousand kilometers away from each other in their own parts of the forest. This part, this central heaven is like this big landmass. And he sort of points out, and you can kind of see where all the other elders are. They're all spread out throughout this forest, thousands and thousands of miles away. He sort of points out and he says, every so often they come together. So it happened they come together and they told me things. Told me the things that they had learned. We came together to try and find out how this magic could have occurred. And where we tried to scry the user that used this, it was just darkness. Wherever this being is, he is locked away somewhere dark. We don't know where he is. He is the one pulling the strings. Okay. Seems like it's time although, to return the amulet. Although you've come for business, before you go, would you like to enjoy one last story? Of course. Pulls out his pipe, puts a bit of grass in it, speaks some words of magic, <clears throat> and he just tells you a pleasant story. It's just for fun. It's not for business. It's just of a time where Rana and Manda sought out to go get some hunt, and Rana landed in the mud, and Manda shot the boar. It's just a pleasant story. He shares it with you. Thank you. It's nice seeing a, a more simple time with Rana and Manda. That part of him is still in there, God. But that time is running out. Instead of curiosity, can you tell me how I can share my memories through the pipe as well? Of course. So he points to a bit of like a tuft of grass that you can see that's, that's grown out. And it's yeah. kind of next to him. He says, just grab a tuft of healthy grass. Yeah. He's, he's watching you. Are you doing it? Oh, yeah. I grabbed the healthy grass. <laughs> put it into the pipe. And he shows you the section of the pipe to put it in. Yep. I follow his instruction and pack it into the pipe. I'm going to give you something. More spells. Lucky card. But that's how you would pronounce it. And that's the magic words that he whispers into his breath. And when you when you put the grass into the pipe and you whisper these words into it, it sort of ignites. And then he, you need to smoke it first. And then you can pass it on. And when everyone has smoked it that you want to share the magic with, you begin remembering the, the memory that you're thinking of. And the smoke images appear and start dancing. Cool. Thank you for that. Uh, it's surprising how little instructions come with magic items. Yes, but this is definitely invaluable. You're welcome, my friend. It has been all but a pleasure to see you. You too. A single tear drops down my cheek. Uh, there's a lot of sleeping in heaven. There's a lot of pleasantry. There's no rush. We can essentially sleep in for as long as we want. And that same warmth <laughs> that you feel snuggled in blankets on a cold morning, we get to live that for as long as we wish. The life of a druid is quite pleasant. And then the ending is, is forever pleasant. Uh, Thank you. I, I, uh, just rest. one last question. Is there any way that we can see how where Jeff is or how Jeff is, if he's still alive? Puts his hand out. 
I grab it. I will do this for you, but I'm very tired. After this, I will sleep. Thank you. All right. So I'll get you to roll a d20. He is alive. Okay. Okie dokie then. I'll leave you to sleep. Thank you, my friend. And he sort of gets comfortable and the bear comes over and snuggles with him. And I just slowly back away. And the wind sort of like swells around this, this structure and you sort of wake up and you start seeing like the, the vines and the roots and, and the building. You've returned back to this little druidic circle that Barry used to use. I look around and I uh, just take a deep breath and sigh and head back to the camp. Very good. All right. You can catch up with the guys. Yep. While you two, while you all catch up and pass on that information, I might check, take a quick pee break. If anyone does, anyone want a pee break before Garrett like tells what's happening? Yeah, that's How good. Long do we have? Can we have like a like a three minute like just a quick go pee, pee. and come back? Talk come to back. You? Uh, cool. Done. Hey, Alex. Yeah. I called that dude from the start. The what? The people breeding themselves through the lizard. Motherfuckers, like episode two. I remember I called Everyone. that out. Everyone just wants to be a person. Yeah. We could have been humans, guys. <laughs> Shit. We could have been, been humans. We could have been, we could have been strong as fuck, man. Oh, we well. could have been jacked as shit. <laughs> Damn it. I want to be jacked. Could have got some cool ornate armor that molds to my body even if i lose an arm yep i mean now you've got cool ornate sick armor. armor that's blue yeah but apparently i never got inspected but i didn't realize mm. i'm so glad i went back in there and pulled that crap out. holy crap good oh looks like biscuit's extending a spell slot later yeah i don't mind i don't mind doing that that'd be cool I, I I know what it is too, but it's it's actually pretty OP. Well, I know I know what the armor is as well. But meta. <laughs> oh, we can always just ask the chick. When we get back home. If you really want to know. I don't think it has magical properties to it, does it? Then I wouldn't really uh, know what it different. is. Yeah. It could be a different armor. Hmm. Because I can only know magic imbued items. Uh, no, like, if it's an armor without magic in it at all, then it's just a piece of armor. Properties are like, probably known by a blacksmith. Hmm. I was just saying, Blake, about humans being spawning from a spawning pool and lizards being humans and shit, how I called that out, like, super early. Yeah. Like, episode two. And I was like, I fucking knew it, man! Oh, damn, I pulled my headset out again. <laughs> 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 oh, Ben stinks. And then we were, and then we were talking about how we regret hey, suck being us. killed because we could have been jacked humans. Yeah, <laughs> could have been jacked humans with like super. Permanently under the influence, jacked humans, huh? A jacked human, nonetheless. <laughs> you you were pretty close, Ben. Pretty close to correct. You said that all lizard, all humans are lizard men, which is not correct. Yeah, that's what I said. All yeah, but no, he was on the right that part track, wasn't but... correct. No, it was it... close. It's just that part wasn't correct. Yeah, I'm in full knowing too that my character has no idea about any of this too. I love playing that part of like just not knowing what shit has happened, <clears throat> especially when like. When um, we were out front of the church and you guys all ran to me at the tree, it's like, why are you guys all panicking? <laughs> I don't understand what the fuck's going on. <laughs> yep. I like playing as the character too. Like, what yep. would my character do? 
Like, I like yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, just to fly, that D20 I rolled was it to see if Silas got sick of guard's hair and cut it off. <laughs> what if did I you roll? I rolled nine. I, I said to myself, if I roll under five, he's just going to get up and cut it. <laughs> <laughs> I got pretty close. I, I was like, ooh. I found the proper table too for the unknown potion. So it's going to be a little bit more punishing if it happens again. Um, I'll post it in the chat so you guys can take a look. But um, <clears throat> this is the actual uh, table. So I, I won't. I'll, I'll keep the old table for Garrett because we already rolled it and determined the outcome. Um, but if there's a random potion to be rolled, it's coming from this table. And there's some very interesting effects that can occur. Welcome back, Brito. What time are we going till tonight? The dog needed to pee. Nine? Is nine o'clock okay, Garrett? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, after this, I'm playing Poe, so... Same. And Alex will probably be sleeping. Or trying to. Yeah, I'll probably go to sleep. I'm excited packing. for that snowboarding tomorrow. I hope it snows for you. Oh, it's already it's looking really snow. good. It's meant to snow on Sunday. I thought so it was meant to tomorrow, s yeah. I thought it was meant to s No, today. Uh, one of those. Well, maybe it was today. I, I, just, I remember it was meant to snow on the weekend. Tomorrow All should right. be nice and clear. <clears throat> so Garrett has left Barry's old little druid ritual place. What are you doing, Garrett? I'm gonna gather the group and tell them what... Um about the whole situation that we're in. So I'm going to break character and explain. Um, you guys already know. So yeah, there you go. Can you tell us in, in a dream way? Aww. Can you, can you All right, guys, other round, other round. Can you act I, it out? I, I look for a tuff of grass. <laughs> And I find a healthy bit of grass and pluck it out, pack it in my pipe. Thumb screw it. And I whisper into the pipe the secret magical words. That we don't even need to hear. You want me to say it? Pronounce it. Do it. Fall, fall on. Then I take a, a puff of it. And I start to remember in my mind... The You're only well, now you sharing this you. stream with yourself at the moment. No, I know, I know. I'm just preparing <laughs> it. You can't. Um, I'm just remembering or bringing the memory to my mind of the meeting I had with Barry, and I pass it to Biscuit. I take a nice big puff and pass oh, no, it wait, on. I don't think of it yet, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I take a puff too, I'll hand it to Silas. Give some to your little snake I, buddy. I bring the memory. I give some to Simon. I give, it I give it to Simon. <laughs> yes. Uh, roll for snake happiness. How many snakes be happy with that? I roll today. All right. How many snakes be happy with that? We haven't <clears> done a snake happiness roll today, so uh, it fair. needs to be done. Simon. Simon. He's pretty oh, happy. happy. He's a happy boy. He takes it in. He's like, oh, okay, that's a new experience. Thank you for that. I enjoyed that thoroughly. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll remember Jeff. Oh. There's, a, there's a deep, there's a deep sort of long glancing look in this snake's eyes. He's remembering. Oh. <laughs> that's yeah. There's a long look in his eye. And I remember the memory that I just had with Barry, and it just starts to dance and the images of my memory just start to dance in the smoke and you guys essentially join me on my on that memory so we, we 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 remember everything that we would we were there with him yeah. yeah okay so 
it's so hard to to go don't remember any of this because you shouldn't and then it's and hard then to go so okay now go back remember what you just told told yourself and to now forget we do remember. and now i can't remember so but garrick can you tell me what this well, so, uh, in short, so basically we, we fucked. Can't say. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, I did not want to remember that. So, I'm sorry, Silas, but I feel like we need to lie. We need to lie to get the army. I think we need to be truthful. How do we get the army? Like, we, like the whole, the whole, whole of it relies on getting this spawning pool back. Even, even without the spawning pool, we need to stop the zombies from killing everyone. I think that internal darkness may be in from the caves uh, chanting. Yeah. Remember how we were there and I told you about the noise I heard from the cave inside the spawn? Like an ongoing chant happening? The only way is to get whoever is in there. We need, we need to take all of that back and defeat that baddie. And that takes priority over everything. Otherwise, we're just going to have zombies forever. And unfortunately, I feel like that takes an army, and I don't think he will give it to us without a I, guarantee of his freedom. I think we need to tell the Dragonborn the truth and the reason for it and be 100% as to why it's that way. But once we've been able to do all that, we can then try our best to find a way to break him out of it once we have the spawning pool back and things are on there because then once he knows that he is literally turning into a How human there's nothing that's going to be able to stop it the amulet won't stop it forever anyway and this is the reason as to why we need to fix it because of his condition and many other people the overwhelming threats of the world we can guarantee in 20 years time <laughs> that he will have his memories back and he'll have control back but i suppose it's either that or not at all could we help him remember with the help of this magical pipe it'll only help with memories that i'm sharing exactly you could get him to share his memories with you and then you will relay the memories back to him after no. Isn't, is, isn't it not not that you not can't remember? Isn't it like that you're being controlled, and we can't break that control? So he's essentially yeah. becoming a mindless, controlled person again. So like even he if he remember. knows those memories, it wouldn't. Yeah, I I think. So the plan is what? Tell him and hope that he'll still give us the army. Well, I, we need I, the amulet back. I could try and learn the spell he's under and then i don't know if that would do it the next Surely. question is what do we do what do we do with the dragonborn once we take the amulet off because he's going to be human controlled and uncontrollable so we <clears> need to lock him up because once we take that off he's a danger to us I still think we tell him the truth. I mean, he, he I was agree. he was also guarded, right? But with he he was also escorted by humans too, yeah. So it's it's not as if he was like fully under control. He would still need to be guarded to make sure going correctly. So he was still being watched the whole time. I think maybe that was because I feel like the humans may know something that we don't, and knew that he was valuable or under yeah. threat. Wasn't yeah, he being true. attacked? Well, that's who the acolytes were trying to target and try to get was the dragonborn. So maybe it's not a good idea that we're sending him to the sporting pool because that'd be exactly what they want. So I say, okay, well, we tell him, and then unfortunately, once he takes it off, we're gonna have to lock him up because we can't give him to the acolytes, and he won't be in control of himself anymore. Haven't you guys seen any of those school plays when you guys were a little, small little kitten like I was? When they had those puppet shows on in town when, you know, there would be those bad guys, there'd be those good guys, and there'd be this person they're protecting, and then that person getting protected would be like, Screw this, I'm going to the threat. And everyone would be like, no, don't do that, that's what they want. And he'd be like, exactly. And then he'd do it anyway. 
I'm sorry, not all of us had wonderful childhood. Oh, I don't. We from what may. I've heard from Biscuit, it doesn't sound like he had a very good childhood, but... <laughs> well, it sounds like he had a better one than mine. <laughs> what, just being hairy and in the wild? <laughs> yes. You don't like being hairy and in the wild? Well, I, I love it, but it was sorry? a hard knock life as me growing up. Tell me. Tell me, how is it so hard for a druid growing up in the wild, Garrett? I didn't I mean, have any parents. Aww. And you didn't have any puppet shows either. No. Except for the puppet shows I did with sticks. <laughs> well, that's the puppet show I saw. It was with sticks. So, we tell him? Let's, that's yep. the plan? Let's take a vote. And then... Vote. What do you want to discuss? So we tell him, and then we give the amulet to Rana. Is that what we're doing? And then somehow yeah. we're getting the army with a confused Dragon Ball who can no longer control <clears throat> anything anymore. Or do we say we give him the amulet after we take back the spawning pool? <clears throat> I, I just worry that <clears throat> one, there are individuals working against us constantly trying to to essentially take control of Rana. And without the amulet, he's very vulnerable. He's because very his close thing. Yeah. Well, and then two, the other issue is he's essentially corrupted himself um by exerting his magical means that can only essentially be reversed by the amulet. By taking back the spawning pool. And the and having the as of it. Well, the so, amulet is is just the completion of their ritual of passing of the power. So yeah. we can delay giving the amulet until we take back the spawning pool. I don't think we could. I think we need to give back today. The sooner the better. We could. Right, how do how do we get the army then? We won't have the we dragonborn could. anymore. We need to show the dragonborn. Let's take him. Let him let him look for himself at the. The threat coming through. Can you share the memory? Holy shit. Uh, I don't think I can because I don't have a pipe and I don't have a spell. <clears throat> Maybe God can teach you. Well, see what you do. <laughs> I'll let you borrow my pipe. Uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> Find a tuff of healthy grass. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> <laughs> yummy. I'll pack it in that nice and good like okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you just whisper into it. <laughs> oh, call, fall on. Uh, and you just uh, smoke a bit and pass it around. Smells like, like watermelons. <laughs> uh, Does that work? The so Garrett. Oh, do you remember the condition? Do you remember how you received this pipe? No. Oh. Roll a d20. Oh, I guess your belly. You made me laugh. My sausage roll nearly sorry. came out my nose. Hey, you've had a few <laughs> pies and a sausage roll. I'm sorry about that. If I make you... Alright, Garrett. Uh, laugh, I'm not telling you. How, it's how I get swollen. Yeah, me too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to go out on a ledge and say, no, it won't work that way. Well, how in about? That case, how about? I suppose you could just tell him. You share your dream. You share the biggest dream. You share the dream of episode one through episode two, through episode three, all the way up until we saved his town to know exactly what kind of crap we're in and all the evidence you have in that big That's ass true. druid noggin. And then he can determine what he wants to do. Because that, that is 100% the truth, and that's, I think, what we're wanting to do. And this would be the most clearest, simplest way to do so. Okay. And then he can decide, well, I mean, we have to take back the amulet anyway, but at least we'll have a reason why. What do we do with him when we take it off? Because that has not been decided. Uh, we can let... send him to the boil. No, we're not killing him. We, we allow him... him up. 
we can also allow him to have input on this too, right? So once we yeah. provide all this information, all this See can be. Yeah. It's me remembering. Okay, let's go tell him. <clears throat> so we've decided, God. Gary's yeah, just showing episode one. Yeah, he's watching my stream. <laughs> on his. He's streaming on Discord episode one in Discord. <laughs> oh, good we've, de Lord. we've decided, God, we're gonna go and see the Dragonborn. All right, I'm only the world, so what's happening? You're God. You're no, God he's, of the world. He's right. the world. All right, everything. What's happening? All right, world, we're what's going to see the Dragonborn. We've decided. All right, he's sitting in his chair. He's looking comfy as fuck. Look like he's woken up. He's having a cup of coffee with a uh, lady. Who looks like dog's breakfast? <laughs> we vomited oh. up and eaten again. Oh! I, I I just start wandering up and I'm like, "Hey, buddy, Biscuit has something to tell you." And I just hide behind everyone else. Very unusual. Hello. He, so, sorry Hi. about you. You want him. some food? I honestly sorry. don't think we've. Uh... Sorry, Emra. Yeah. So, sorry about God. <laughs> In advance. But he needs to relay something to you um, after we tell you something. Go, Biscuit. Do, do you want some food? Lady has been reheating some of the meat from last night. Yeah, uh, no time. Yeah. I have a small little nibble. But uh, look, I'd like to formally introduce myself. My name is Biscuit. Uh, I don't necessarily know my last name or family name, but um, hey, you can call me Biscuit. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Biscuit. Uh, I am Drog Emberfoot. Drog Emberfoot. Uh, we have some, um, obviously, you know your reason here, and it's to prove the fact that we require your and your army's assistance defending against the threat of the world. Yes, you talked about a ritual that needed to be casted to permanently free me, right? Correct. Uh, there's multiple other things we need to explain and honestly there's just so much information that I feel like we necess we just simply need to show you instead of tell you would you be happy to share a drink with us? what does that involve? I turn to Garrett who's solemnly hiding behind me uh, remember that won't work that way we essentially have to show him. I mean, can't we share we have, pipe? Well, no, I, I, I never, I've never seen you don't have the to army. Have, you don't have to have seen the army. You saw me draw the map of the army. You remember me telling you about it. Remember that time where I told you guys well, what's the difference the between me telling you what you told me <clears throat> because versus then, you telling him directly. Because if I tell him episode one through episode six, it's going to take me a good hour to explain every single thing we've done from then till now in order to recuperate our story. Whereas you can literally just puff on a piece of shit for one minute <laughs> and he knows everything. He knows the whole YouTube channel and he can look at every single channel and know every single tiny detail and every single thought Only you had. You know. yeah. Like, and every single positive thought you had. Like, no bad... What's YouTube? Story. What's YouTube? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a special blade of grass. Yeah. It, it, it's like watching something live. You know yeah. what I mean? Like he he will know. Yeah. You're not just the Why way you saw it, it. The reason for it, like he'll know it in much more of a detailed format. Like it'll take me so long to talk to him about it. You just tell him all, right. all the thoughts well, and the memories I'll... you have of it. I'll, I'll do what I can. I search around for a tuft of grass. I grab you find it. One. Yep. I pipe it in the pipe. I whisper, "Tall, fall on." Take a puff. Hand it to the dragonborn. Take I a puff of this, buddy. I haven't been able to have a leisurely smoke oh. since I can remember. I feel so I sorry will... for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And he, he seems to pleasure. like have a big big puff and he seems to enjoy it. And he takes his time and he blows it out. And he hands it back to you because he doesn't really understand what's happening. So that that was lovely, thank you. 
Thank you. And I bring all of the memories of the entire adventure from my perspective, rushing through his brain. Wow, okay. Yeah, there you go. That's a lot to take in for a, for a man that remembers very little. Um, all right, so I guess it would be shock, horror, 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 sadness, sadness, horror, horror, horror. Happiness. Don't forget denial. Happiness. Sadness. Happiness. Sadness. <laughs> the more horror. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, he remembers Rollo, and yep. he's a bit sad about that. Uh, and then he remembers, then he remembers the town. He doesn't remember uh, anything about me and ropes. Your, in, <laughs> your intention to rescue him, he seems a bit somber about that. And he's caught up. And he remembers your conversation with Barry. He remembers your conversation about his freedom. So much easier. Around. So much easier, right? And that we tried so hard to free him. Like, we weren't being bitches about it. He looks at you, Biscuit. And he says, why, why, why did you say a ritual could be done to free me? Yeah, I was, Biscuit. I was told a ritual could be done to save you. It can, just when Rana learns. Unfortunately, what we didn't understand was the That those things frame. meant. It's not instant. I, I wasn't, I wasn't aware of that time frame. I will, I will not be a slave again. I will teach someone what to do with the administration. When the time comes, and he points at you, Biscuit, says, you will not let me be a slave. You don't even want to wait? Isn't your life worth waiting for someone to learn how to free you? What if we, what if we give, what if we stop this evil in a cave? You were born into darkness and know nothing but dark, and then shown the light. Would you accept going back into that pit? I can't say I, I understand that. I'd have to ask the other guys, because they've experienced what you have. I understand. Would you guys willingly go back under their control? I wouldn't. I completely understand where you're coming from. Not even if this power is removed. Absolutely not. What would you, what's your decision then? Because we have to take the amulet, so then we give it up to you to decide what you want done. The ever-bearing light promotes the sacrifice of oneself for the greater good and the good of others. I will not let my suffering prevent the salvation of many. We will do what is needed to free these people, to save your friend and their civilization. But when that amulet is taken off, I refuse to go back into their control. If you promise me that one sense of salvation, I will do what is needed to give you what you want. So just to be clear, you're giving us permission to, you know... So, he's basically saying... Punch you! <laughs> he, he's happy to provide us no, with the ability of an army under the rules and conditions that if he is... will be turned back into a slave of the humans, be kill killed. Absolutely. I well, had I guess a we should... horrible feeling that this would be the the case. The Solus was about to be, I think. Yeah. You would understand that too, Silas, being that you've experienced what he has literally been through. I would fall on my own glaive. See. That's then it is agreed. He, he puts his hand out to you, Silas, and he says, You are one that follows the faith. I trust you most. Will you make a pact on this? And he puts his hand out to you. Wait, do oh, it. Not make a pact. <laughs> Silas grabs his hand and says, I will. 
they're essentially hate that emanates from that that connection. I'll get you to roll a religion roll. Oh, religion. <laughs> I'm not the only one that goes into these things blindly. He did too. He's still in one. He's a good person, though. <laughs> you've, en you've entered into a holy pact. It is similar to like a blood contract, but it is at the risk of uh, disrespecting your god. It is like putting your god's reputation up against another god's reputation. If you were to rescind on this, it would be like your god is seen as disrespectful or untrustworthy to the other holy power. Wow. Okay. What's better than swearing on his life? He doesn't care about his life. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I hope you understand the decision. I will not be led back to that pit of despair. Very well. If it is your wish, I shall see it done. Very good. I wish to return home. There's much I wish to impart on how to fool the humans and how to ensure the resistance survival. There must be much that must be taught. Before we do that, then, I would need to speak with Rana. Very well. Um, Lady wanted to uh, hang out. <laughs> I'm not too sure why she's being so friendly. But That's she lady. wanted to share so much with me. So I will enjoy what I can before duty calls. And he wanders off to the forge. And Lady's busy away doing something. That looks interesting. Well, I think I should probably go and see Rana alone. Alright, how do you do that? So it's really, really difficult to even try and find him. Because he does not want to be fit. He's he more or less take, hiding. Take Biscuit with you. Take Biscuit with you. He knows Biscuit, know. where was Rana last? Um, he was up on top of the gate, pacing back and forth, more or less just defending everything, cloaked, quiet, darkness. And I found him by sheer luck. Prove it. I think you should ready your hat again. Ready my what? Your hat. Oh. Told yeah. the biscuit. What's that? Alright, well. You go somewhere. Biscuit? Didn't he say that there was one person that knows the condition he's in? I don't think so. No, he says that no one has known. I do Listen. now, and you guys do now. He doesn't want to reveal himself. I'm oh, pretty sure. Isn't it hard when your character just doesn't remember important bits of the story? Hmm. Rudolph? What are you guys doing? I can't help. We don't know. Imagine if you had that trait that allows you to call upon the god to tell you exactly what you remember, because you have to know. <laughs> Nearly got it. Nearly got it, didn't I? No! Got one dex! <laughs> and some piercing thing! Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> god damn it. One dex! Um, so, sorry. God, what was that question? So, someone knows already there's one other yeah there was one other person that knows the condition that ron is in and he's the only other person that's why like and he asked you to not oh, I can't say let anyone else know you can't say anything Britt. well done that's no, correct the, we already know the condition he's in we do but if i knew who that other person was, I could go and approach him to find out where he's at. <laughs> and did I, did I tell you who this person was, did I? Where he at? <laughs> you could just call his name. Didn't I dream this and then share this 
or share this in oh, didn't i speak with rana and then just share this information with the group at the table you did but mm. so then if you share it with me i can tell you i did share it with you god am i god and world is this correct i don't want to drink a potion i don't know what you're talking about i was at the table with the whole party and i shared exactly uh -huh. what rana set up on the wall Oh, okay. Uh, hmm. It's quite circumstantial. Um, I guess I guess you would know, but I'll get you to roll a d20 because you didn't pay attention as a character, so I don't believe whether you've remembered it or not. Me. Roll a d20. Oh, okay. Me. <laughs> guy on the wall. Something something. Guy on a man, man on a wall. Some guy on the wall. Ah! I don't remember. You could just go around and ask everybody. Just ask every lizard man you see. Yeah, because it's always good to say, Hey, do you know the state that Rana's in? Oh, you do? Would you know where he's at? <laughs> I just found a stick! I just found a stick! There we go! Yeah, talk to that guy again. He seems very knowledgeable. Oh, what? I'm just holding shields today. I don't know what happened to him. Mr. Rana just flew away. I have no idea. Just leave me alone, please. <laughs> what are you? What are you idiots doing? What's happening? We need to find Rana. Cast a spell. Sniff him out. Turn into a dog. So, smell his scent. I so don't what, know. Why, why do we need Rana for? <laughs> Well, I don't understand what we're here for either. It, yeah. Aren't we? Aren't we getting the amulet back? We're gonna probably. We're gonna. I, know, I need we're... to tell him that we're going to give him the amulet back, yeah. as well as I wanted to share a happy memory with Rana. The last yeah. time he said he will see us is on the battlefield when taking back the grove. So then we just give him the bloody... So you're going to have to kill him on the battlefield. So we'll have the bloody Dragonborn for a bit then. Just... We can share the story with we... Rana first and then go from there. But how do we do him. that if we can't find turn, him? Turn, turn, turn into a dog and go sniffing him out. Off you go. He'll be near the spawning pool. He'll be ready for us to attack. Or he'll be... No, he'll be ready with the army. Right? Once the army is approaching, he'll be there for the attack. All right, well, this plan isn't going as planned, so we should at least find someone that is in charge and yeah. advise and let them know that we are going to be going away for another day or two. So how do you assess someone that's in charge? Do you go by, like, size, where they're standing? How, what's your assessment like for who's in charge here? Sorry, he, he won't be at the pool. He won't be there, probably. Oh, see, I know who what? you're talking about. How do you assess authority here? Who I, Tell me. Who I saved? Who I saved that? I saved that guy's life. What was his name again? Rudolph. The red Rollo. Oh. oh, Rollo. Oh. Did you say Rollo out loud? Don't say Rollo. That makes me sad. I, I slept oh. underneath a carriage for seven days to come rescue him, and I turn up in a swamp, and you all tell me he's dead. You don't even give me any condolences. There's too many over. creatures with our <laughs> names. Hey, I then did like, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he died. Well, I, I was kind of <laughs> new to the whole thing. I didn't know, and I thought you knew already. <laughs> I'm just giving you shit. It's all right. Okay. I'm going to try to find Rudolph. How do you, you find Rudolph? Rudolph? Well, How last, do you find him? Like, he was on the, the guard on the gate. Oh, so you go to the gate, do you? Twelve hours yes. ago. <laughs> Alright, there's two lizard men on the gate. I approach them and I say, Hey, you... Oh, hey, guy, what's up? I'm just holding some sticks. <laughs> Not you, the other one, Sorry. the bigger one. <laughs> oh, the bigger one! So you go to the bigger one, do you? Yeah. <laughs> what do you want? Um... Do you happen to know where Rana is? Why is that important to you? Because I need to tell him something of great importance about the passing of powers 
um, to complete the ritual that Barry was to finish. Roll persuasion. Mm. You got pretty good persuasion, didn't you? Yes, oh, I no, do. you don't. You I don't. do. I oh, do. That's right, Biscuit does it. Ooh, 18! Woo! Damn! That's pretty persuasive there, G. He has given me instructions not to tell anyone where he is. But you well, speak of the ritual, and you speak of the power being transferred. I will tell you how to find him. Oh, when you Christ. do approach him, though, I recommend you go with no weapons. I recommend you go and you have your hands up. You don't want to be seen as a threat when he's hunting. Okay. I can do that. Alright. <laughs> so, um, up on this, this sort of place where he is, um, lizardmen, essentially, instead of paper, they use leaves and mud. That's, that's how they draw. That's how they write. So he draws you a little mud map. And you know how to find Rana. And he says to you, Rana does not want to be found. If you go, only you go. Good luck. Okay. Be safe. Try not to get yourself killed. Bye, guys. Good luck. I'll be don't back. Do any, don't do anything stupid. Bring my rope, you said? <laughs> Say, Garrett? Yep. Rana is where they buried Manda. So I, I approach the grave site. And do you want me to roll perception? Do you try to perceive something? Yeah, I'm trying to see if he's nearby the grave site or if, like he's hiding or if he's there. Yeah, roll. Roll a perception. You can't see anything. So I walk up to Manda's gravesite and I kneel down and I say a slight prayer. And then after a few moments of silence, I stand back up and take another look around and just loud enough to not be like yelling it, but not quiet either. I kind of say, Rana, I need to speak with you. Right. So this is the first time you've actually seen Manda's grave. So when we first started those chats, I think it was in episode two, um, where I mentioned that Rana and Barry were taking care of Manda's body and, and making sure that went through normally. So what yeah. you see is that it's like a mound of dirt in... It's like a little island like a little island in like a river that's going down yeah. towards a waterfall. And it looks like there's vines and roots that have sort of like covered over it. And there's this, this sort of like plant that's growing, that's flowering as well. And you kind of see that and you, you think that that's, that's very influenced from druid craft, the spell from a druid. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of a very sacred place. And from the surroundings, you can see that the waters and the springs are all really healthy. And this place has really been quite blessed um, as a sign of respect. So, so as, you, as you say those words, you essentially sense a presence nearby. And you hear the words, Mr. God, you will come to this place. Did you know I was here? I had my suspicions. Not a very good liar. That's okay, my friend. What do you want? Rudolph will be forgiven. Um, I know that Biscuit spoke with you, and I know the state that you're currently in. Um, and I've spoken with Barry again. How is and my old friend? He's happy. He's at peace. But he is also worried about you. Ah. Uh, always a worry I that old lizard. Uh, I told him if he kept worrying, his tail would fall off. He kept worrying. His tail stayed on. 
I guess he proved me to be in the wrong. But he always had the tendency to do that. He, he walks out in front of you and, and you see him exactly as described. He kind of like has that kind of like demonic kind of look to him. And you see he's wearing a cloak. It's fairly covered. Um, and through the little cowl that he's wearing, you can see the markings of the amulet. So we've told the dragonborn um, what, about how did the he amulet. Take it? How did he take it? He took it better than I expected. Um, he is going to willingly give up the amulet uh, in order to be able to save your people. Um, at which... Give up? You mean return? It yes. is our people's. Yes. He's going to return the amulet and allow the completion of the power passing from Barry to yourself. As must be. Good. Yes, it has to happen. And I understand that. Um, we just need a couple more days to go back and um, for him to essentially say his goodbyes because he is going to not willingly go back under the control, which means we will have to kill him to end his misery. 10 years. If you give me 10 years, we can spawn someone to save him. I mean, he may think that it will be the worst thing to go through, but the light at the end of the tunnel may actually be better once he arrives there <laughs> than the journey that he sees now. His mind has been made up. Um, it is a foolish choice. Dragonborns live for a very long time. Ten years is nothing to him. It would yes. be foolish to lose such such a close person to you over such a vain decision made in anger and emotion. You can lock him up. Ten years. Give me ten years. And I can save your friend like I've saved you. The difference between my abilities to save you than to save your friend is the transferring of the relic. The relic leaving in Gar's body and coming to mine allowed me to save you. To just kill someone, to make that sacrifice for 10 years out of hundreds of years of life. Foolish. You should not accept this if you care for him. I'll I'll try to do everything I can to convince him otherwise. He is your friend. He's away. The power will be returned to my people. And I will save them. And I will birth new swanlings. And he understands that. Um, but there's one thing that I just wanted to share a memory with you as well before I leave you once more. It's a, it's just a happy memory that was shared between me and Barry. And I, I feel that it's important for you to have this memory again as well. Speaking to me, not for business, but that warms my heart. Thank you, God. Yeah. The leaves that grow around Mander are rich. That have been blessed by Barry before his parting. This place is very sacred to my heart. Please take 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 the growth from near her body. I take a bit of the grass from near Anders body, pop it in the you pipe. You sense that it's very rich, and in terms of the power, it very much enhances what you're about to do. Right. And I whisper into it tall fall on, take a puff. Hand it to Rana. I remember giving you this pipe. Do you remember the conditions that I gave you this pipe? They're a little fuzzy. It was some time ago, my friend. In my culture, if in my heart this item no longer belongs to me, it is to be given as a gift to someone else, and it is belongs to them. It is their item. The same falls upon this. It will only be usable by yourself. When the item is no longer yours, please give it to someone else so it is theirs. 
as he finishes saying that, takes a, sm a smoke and hands it back to you. This is Rana's original pipe. Yeah. Okay. And I um, impart a memory as well of him and Manda hunting and him falling in the mud. Roll persuasion with advantage. Ooh. Fifteen. My God, you just reached the magical number. You only just <laughs> reached it too. Damn. Good job. Good job. So, the appearances that show here, you just see Manda, you just see Rana. It's all it's, it's as you've always seen them. But this was easily 200 years ago. As you describe this to him, you see him start to weep. And you see the colour drain from his eyes, the blackness and the redness. And as they drip down his skin, they kind of leave burn marks. They drip to the ground and they burn and singe the grass. And you see the eyes return to the white and green. Thank you, my friend. It has been too long since Manda has left. I hope soon we will have spawnling mothers again. We will. And I promise very you I'll return. I'm ready to share. I thank you, God. Thanks. And I thank Barry for sharing that with me as well. He always had a way to bring a tear to my eye. The old bastard. Me too. I will continue my protection of this area. Uh, he, he points to a certain area where you see that the roots has like these little scratch marks. Yep. And he's, he points them and says, they dare defile this ground. They sent particular undead. Ones that snickered and laughed as they defiled this area. I will not allow Ingar to disrespect Manda's body. So I guard this every night. Every night he sends one or two. Ingar will succumb to my spear. As he bangs the spear and the muck disappears from this simple wooden stick, you see that the spear is slowly starting to corrupt and there's like little spikes coming out of it. But it's still the same spear. And it's still got the, the little glow to the little spear at the top. And it's cold, right? But there's little smoke coming out of the, the blade. You're, you're doing really good job just remember the happy times and we will come back to you as quickly as we can Masha's blessing god Masha's blessing to you and he runs off to the forest and i wait for him to disappear completely before i leave and head back to the encampment so good, Very good. done you're so clever g I was, yeah, that was. That was so good. <clears throat> Great, you arrive back at camp. It's a little trek. It's um maybe like forty minutes walk. All right, all right, guys. Um, we can head off. Let's try to do this as quick as we can, so that we can save. Um, the world. Where's that card at? <laughs> oh, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you looking at me? <laughs> oh, sorry. Hey, we, we, all, we all stare at Biscuit. <laughs> I was having a chat with that lizard guy over there. He's got a really funny accent. <laughs> all right. Have a good trip. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Where are we headed? <laughs> we have to take the dragonborn to say his goodbyes, mm, and then okay. then bring the and tell him to bring the army because that's the next step. We'll be bringing the army and taking this morning pool. So, is that is that so? As God kind of communicated this with us, that stuff. Or? Yeah, I 
I, yeah, um, no, we know that much. Yeah, okay, cool. All right. I just reaffirm the plan. I throw my to... hat in the air this time to flourish it and spin it to let it fall to the ground. All right, yeah. It, go, it lands with a big <laughs> puff of smoke and you see like this ring of smoke goes... <laughs> sort of bombs this ring and comes in this big cloud of smoke and then you hear the whinny of the spectral horse oh. as the dust sort of disappears and you see the cart form. There it is. It's a beautiful looking cart. It's very Try simple, not... but it's beautiful. Try not to squish biscuit when you jump in again, G. Yeah, I'll try not to. <laughs> Lady comes over and she's like, you're not about to leave without saying goodbye, are you, Elfie? We never would, but we are oh. we are on a, in a hurry. So where's uh, where's our dragonborn friend? Ah, uh, uh, a... <laughs> she she yells and it is like a lion's roar. Yep. And you see Drog, he's on his little chair. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> and he runs over. He's like, what? What? What is it? What is it? We're under attack. <sighs> Time to go. Oh, could, couldn't you have just come over and told me that? I don't uh, think that, that's not how lady works. <laughs> I would have been walking all the way over there. You got the same message. Just get in the cart and off you go. But don't you forget to come back. We gotta drink some more and talk some more tales. Ah, yes. I will return. We will drink more. He hops in the car. Uh, I, I jump in too. I jump on the front. Hey, Lay, you can't be going like that without giving me a hug. What is this? You come back here, Elfie. I'm sorry. Big hug. Big hug. You better be coming back soon. I've been sick of building the gates. I'm done with gates. <laughs> <laughs> You've built some really good gates. Maybe you I've built just... some bloody good dwarven de- gates. They're yeah, dwarven gates made out of dwarven steel. Yep. No. Maybe you can relax a little bit till we get back, maybe, instead of building anymore. <clears throat> I think that's an excellent idea. I will see you soon, my friend. Alright. You all get the cut? I jump on the front. Take us away, Biscuit. I suggest guard stay in the cabin stick with the dragonborn. Our final hours. So hopefully uh we kindle his Yes. I don't think it's gonna help, but I'll do what I can. Ten years, as as right? As long as he doesn't disrespect bloody Silas's god, and he has to take that back off. Just tell, just tell him exactly what Rana said. Ten years. Yeah. That the light Ten will not years. be, and the dark will not be as dark as he wants. Right. No. Yeah. You know. So anyway. I hop in the back of the cabin, the cart, the the trolley, the thing. I'm sitting up with you then, biscuit. Hold on, before before we do the RP side of things. Can we work out how this is functioning? So the cart has appeared, people have hopped in. What are you doing, Ben? I've currently just got the cart sitting there still at the front of the gate. And I'm just it's sitting there waiting while people kind of communicate and have to say their goodbyes. So I've, I've sent something to Garrett. This is just world knowledge that you will know, Garrett. And this is what Rana was talking about in terms of how foolish all of this is. Okay. Okay. Dragonborn is really young. He'd may- be maybe 60. They live ages. Okay. Cool. So you, you th- the car's just hanging there, yeah? Yeah, we're just kind of sitting there for a minute just as you say our goodbyes. Okay. I've said mine. I climb into the front seat because I don't want to be part of that emotional conversation. Gets in last and does that whole the old classic, you know, where you, you bang on the side of the, the thing to say everyone's inside. Yeah, that's a western thing. Bang bang. I bang, look around bang. in the treetops oh, around the gate to see if anyone's looking. <laughs> Try and proceed. The gate's anyone. open. The gate's yep. open. Rudolph is looking at you. I nod to Rudolph and I Rudolph. I say to Rust. Wolf. The cart takes off at quite a pace, and it is smooth. Ben, you can see the road ahead of you is bumpy, full of 
craters. It looks like impacts from golems and just normal fighting. But the kite is smooth and it just glides across the road. Damn, the suspension in this biscuit did a good job. <laughs> did you put air, air, air suspension in? Yeah, true. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> it's good. Magic cart. Uh, a few hours. So, Garrett and Silas, I guess you to roll a perception. My bad rolls of the day. <laughs> Damn. Ah, <sighs> all right. Uh, it's a bit too difficult. All right, we're, we're gonna make a roll, and let's see what happens. So the dragonborn has taken off a lot of his armor, and he's got it in his backpack. Garrett, on his arm, you can see what looks to be a tattoo, and it is like these tribal marks that run down his arm. And it kind of looks like a bit of like a cage running down his arm. And it's a very unique type of tattoo. I, I look at Drog. Hey, Drog, that's a, that's a very interesting marking you've got on your arm there. Do you mind me asking what it means? Ah, uh, this is not a tattoo that I paid for. This is a tattoo that was imprinted on my skin. When I killed one of those cultist warlocks. This was a very long time ago. A time that I have very faint memories of. Wow, so this has been a long battle. Well, I mean... I've spent 60 years fighting for the ever-bearing light. It has been a bit of a struggle. The humans have taken the ever-bearing light's powers to use for their own evil deeds, twisting its teachings to justify their nefarious ways. Ever-bearing lights? What? What is that? That is, that is the Holy Spirit that I follow, that I draw the power from. I am the ever-bearing champion's light. And what do you mean by the humans have been manipulating it? Uh, it is the religion that the humans follow. The ever-bearing light is essentially the, the the teachings that they give to its followers to justify the, the wars and the fighting. You know, in the name of the ever-bearing light, we will enslave the hordes of orcs and tabaxis and dwarves. And it has been their justification. It is not its true nature. I don't know how they twist its power to their will, but it is not its true nature. <clears throat> so your religion is being manipulated to essentially control other people for their nefarious cause. In part, in part. Think of it more like propaganda. Right. Do you happen to know anything about how they're managing to control people like ourselves? No idea. Well, I, I thank you for sharing that. It is very interesting to me. You're welcome. We have a long trek ahead. Do you have anything interesting to share for me? Any little stories? Oh, well, you know, I've been thinking about your decision and even Rana, he knows he can clear the spell that the humans have over you, albeit it would take a few years for that to occur. Is there anything that could convince you to not end your life so willingly? Or so, not willingly, easily. Not one day, not one minute will I fall under their powers. 
The cruelty that I inflicted under their influence is unforgivable. I will face judgment in front of the overbearing light. I will face punishment of forgiveness. Not one second more. That is my decision. And I respect your decision. Uh, I just thought it was worth just clarifying, making sure it is 100% what you're wanting to do. One can live for thousands of years, but it is a decision to be made whether your life for a thousand years is worth one day of suffering, one hour of suffering. No more. I have made that decision. Fair enough. Well, as you said, we do have quite a long journey. Regale me more about the Everbearing Light. Great. So whatever you want to know, I can tell you, and we can kind of just like skim through it, because it is nine o'clock, so I'll give you the answers that you're after. Oh, it's just more of a way to kind of have a yeah. peaceful right. ride. Very nice. Lighten the mood, which is he'll very talk to you. He'll talk to you about what he remembers. He'll talk to you about his religion, what it means. It's essentially like Christianity, um, but this this world's version. Um, you know how Christianity can often be turned into hate the gays and all that kind of stupid stuff. It's essentially like the humans use it for those those means, and it actually means something different. It means something you mean different. it's like how the American Republicans are using it to get their way with everything? All right, Ben, your channel is being banned from the get-go as soon as this video is released. Oh, yes. shit, sorry. No, no, you can talk about liberal and <laughs> political things. I completely forgot that this is recorded, sorry. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, I'm enough. just pulling your leg. It's all good. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's it. And um, that was actually a really cool session. But that yeah. that is the session because Thank Alex you. needs to go sleepy buys to make that sure he has a very nice we're time. very, very close to having a big fight again, which I'm so excited about. Yeah. Maybe. Big, big Maybe. We still got to convince an army to follow. Oh, uh, Dragonborn. He seems like a good egg. And Silas will kill him. That was, that was a cool session, guys. Thank you for yeah. that. that Thank really you, cool. Blake. Super good. Thanks, brother. That was really good. You'll be happy to know that my notes are a little bit more detailed now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to remember that I've told you things. And, you know, God's not always going to step in and tell you stuff. Thanks, God. <laughs> I um I play a couple of D and D sessions, and it always feels like this session is is that much more special. I don't I don't know if it's just that I, I'm telling my own story, or that we just all meshed well so well together. It always just seems so much cooler. Like I'm also story. happy that I yeah I love the story, but I'm also happy that I didn't have to chug any random potions. That's why is I was it? like that's why I was like I don't remember I can't say <laughs> anything. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, that was cool. Oh, I'm going to hang around. Um, I'm going to play some Path of Exile. But That's Alex, good. hope you enjoy the snow, buddy. Have a good um, ski. Okay. And then it's two weeks. Again. Two weeks for another sesh. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, we'll just do our normal... What is it? Seven Saturday. Normal. Yeah. Seven till midnight? Yeah. 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 Cool. Thanks for uh, coming on it earlier, guys. Yeah, pleasure. No worries, man. You have we to can always be life. flexible. Yeah. I'm free most weekends, so one way or another we can sort of work out. And Ben has the superpower where he just makes time, like organizes time to just have. It's amazing. Amazing. Just teach me your powers, Yoga. All right, say goodbye to the YouTube video. Hi, YouTubes. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night. And see you for the next one.